Oh, praises. So tonight's topic is called Haters of God. Haters of God. That's tonight's topic. Let's open up with the book of Psalms, chapter 81, verse 8. Let's start there. Psalms 81, verse 8. Psalms chapter 81, verse 8. Come on. Hear, O my people, and I will testify unto thee, O Israel, mm -hmm. if thou wilt hearken unto me. Read again, verse 8. Psalms chapter 81, verse 8. Hear, O my people, and I will testify unto thee, O Israel, if thou wilt hearken unto me. So the Lord is speaking through Asaph here. He says, Hear, O my people, and I will testify unto thee, O Israel, if thou wilt hearken unto me. Give me the book of Revelation 22, 16. Revelation chapter 22, verse 16. This is Christ speaking right here. Watch this. Come on. Revelation chapter 22, verse 16. Read. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root, I am the root and of the spring of David. And no, the no, offspring no, of David. No, no. Okay, read the verse again, verse 16. Come on, read it right. Revelation chapter 22, verse 16. Mm -hmm. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I these am the These things root. in the churches. He says, I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. In these last days goes into these different and various camps that are be teaching the truth in the spirit of Christ. So Christ is teaching us this day, the spirit of Christ in the minds and the hearts of the prophets. Okay, so the same thing that happened back then, it's happening this day. Go ahead. I am the root and the offspring of David and mm -hmm. the bright and morning star. He is the bright and morning star. So he is gonna testify unto us the things that are written in this book. Everything that, they, that the, 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 the prophets testified in the spirit of Christ, the things that Christ testified unto us, it was all the things that are written in this book. You understand? He didn't make anything up. He didn't speak anything of his own. Okay? Go back to where he was at now. Psalms 81 verse 8 again. Psalms 81 verse 8. Right. Hear, O my people, and mm. I will testify unto thee, O Israel, if thou wilt hearken unto me. So the Lord is saying, he says, I will testify unto thee, O Israel, if thou wilt hearken unto me. So you will receive the testimony that will be brought forth, which is the spirit of Christ. You understand? Give me that in uh, Revelation chapter 19. Revelation chapter 19 and verse 10. Okay? It says, if thou wilt hearken unto me. So you will receive the testimony of Christ if you hearken unto the words that are written in this Bible. We what you got. Revelation 19 verse 10. Come on. Revelation chapter 19 verse 10. And Wait. I fell at his feet to worship him. And he uh -huh. said unto me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant and of thy mm -hmm. brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Come on. Worship God. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. He says, because the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So when the apostles, the prophets are in the days of old, when they were teaching us the law, statutes and commandments, the do's and don'ts of the law, guess what? They were pushing, they were teaching the testimony of Christ, which is the spirit of prophecy. If you do this, if you do right according to the law, you will receive a reward. You do not, you don't do right according to the law, you will receive a, a judgment, okay? That's what we're reading here. So go back to Psalms 81, verse 8 again. Psalms of the 81, verse 8. Really? Hear, O my people, and I will testify unto thee, O Israel, if thou wilt hearken unto me. If thou wilt hearken unto me. So he's letting you know who his people are also. He says, hear all my people, and I will testify unto thee. O Israel, if thou wilt hearken unto me. He's letting you know who his people are. Next verse, come on. There shall no strange God be in thee. Mm -hmm. Neither shall thou worship any strange God. That's the commandment right there. Read it again, verse 9. Psalms 81, verse 9. Mm -hmm. There shall no strange God be in thee, neither shalt thou worship any strange God. 
So now remember verse 8, it says, hearken unto me, O Israel. Okay, it says, if thou will hearken unto me. Then these are the test, this is the testimony right now. It says, I will testify unto thee. What is he going to testify? What we are reading now in verse 9. They shall no strange God be in thee. Neither shall thou worship any strange God. Then no stranger, no strange God must be among us. Neither shall we worship any of those strange gods. Guess what? We broke any. We broke all the commandments. You understand? Watch this. Give me that in Exodus twenty. Exodus twenty verse three. He says, "They shall no strange god be in thee. Neither shall thou worship any strange god." Read that. Exodus twenty and verse three. Come on. Exodus chapter 20, verse 3. Come on. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. That's what he's saying right there. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. He says what? He says, you must not have any strange god in thee. Go ahead. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or mm -hmm. any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or mm -hmm. that is in the earth beneath or that Come is... On. All that is in the water under the earth. So now he's telling us, listen, you must not even make graven images of these strange gods that will be among you. Go ahead. Watch this. The reason why he's saying don't make graven image, images of any strange gods is going to let you know why in the next verse. Come on. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them. Thou shalt not what? Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them. Thou shalt not bow down thyself unto them. Don't make any graven images to bow yourself down unto these strange gods. Go ahead. Nor serve them. Mm -hmm. For I am the Lord thy God. For I, the Come Lord on. thy God, am a jealous God. Come on. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the mm -hmm. third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Of them that what? Of them that hate me. You see where the hatred for the most high God comes from? The hatred for the most high God comes from us worshiping strange gods, us saving these strange gods, us sacrificing unto these strange gods. You understand? That's where the hatred for the most high God comes from. When we worship strange gods. That's why here says what? It says, For I the Lord, thy God, am a jealous God. You see that thing? Visiting the iniquities of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. So the hatred for the most high God comes from us worshiping other strange gods. You understand? That's where the hatred comes from. Read that again, verse 5. Okay. Exodus chapter 20, verse 5. Read. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, mm -hmm. nor serve them. For I, Read. the Lord thy God, and a jealous God, mm -hmm. visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children, unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Keep read, read the next verse. Watch this. This is the opposite. Okay, come on. And showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. You see where the love of the Lord comes from? When we keep God's commandments, that's us loving the Father. The minute we stop keeping the commandments of the Most High God, we are hateful unto the Most High God. That's what he's saying right there. Okay, watch this. Give me Deuteronomy 32, verse 16. Deuteronomy 32, verse 16. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 16. Mm -hmm. They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods. They did what? They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods. They says they provoked him. So you know what it means to provoke somebody? That means you go, you going out of your way you have to piss them off. That's what he's saying. We're going out of our way to piss the most like God off. That's what he's saying right there. He says they provoked him to jealousy with strange gods. Remember what the commandment said. He says you, there must not be any strange God with um, among you. You understand? Neither. Shall there be any, you shall you save any strange God. But guess what we did? We went outside of that commandment, you understand? And we provoked the most High God with what? With these strange gods that God commanded us that thou shalt not. We did it anyway. Okay? Read it again. 
verse 16. Come on. Deuteronomy chapter, chapter 32, verse 16. Read. They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods. Mm -hmm. With abominations provoked they him to anger. We provoke the most high God to anger with these abominable idols. We provoke the Lord to anger. We provoked him to anger with our strange gods. Go ahead. They sacrificed unto devils, not to God. Really? To gods whom they knew not. Mm -hmm. To new gods that came newly up, whom your Come fathers on. feared not. You see what he's saying? Is that they sacrifice unto devils, not to God. Because these strange, these strange gods, you understand, they come with their own abominable customs that go with them. You understand? Like now, we are almost, we're in December now, okay? Our people, they are, they cannot wait for Christmas, that demonic abominable day. You understand? They cannot wait for that thing. So that's what we're reading here. Is that they sacrifice unto devils because they're going to celebrate Christmas, our people. Our people are going to celebrate Christmas. That's why I said sacrifice unto devils, not to God. To gods whom they knew not. To new gods that came newly up, whom your fathers feared not. You see what we did? Because remember, Moses is prophesying right here. You understand? He's prophesying. Because when Solomon took over, that's exactly what we did. You understand? When Solomon went off. We started worshiping this strange god after the split. We, I mean, it became worse after the split because Jeroboam, what did he do? He set up two golden, I could do two golden calves in what? In Dan, even unto Beersheba. Northern Kingdom went heavy into that thing. You understand? So it is today. All 12. You understand? All 12 in these last days. We're doing the same things. Read that again, verse 17. Deuteronomy chapter 2, verse 17. They mm -hmm. sacrificed unto devils, not to God, to gods right. whom they knew not, to new gods mm -hmm. that came newly up, whom your fathers feared not. So now you see that part when it says to new gods that came newly up. You understand? The new gods that came newly up goes into what? Goes into your Christmas, go into your Father's Day, Mother's Day, you understand? Islam, you understand? Allah. You understand that black rock in Mecca, okay? Buddha, you understand? All of the Hinduism, Shiva and Ganesh, okay? All of those, those these are new gods that came you the up. You understand? That's why it says, whom your fathers feared not. Because we didn't worship them gods. We worship the one true God, the God of heaven and earth. And we, what, we provoke the Lord to, to jealousy and anger. When we went after those 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 idols, watch this. You told me to need verse sixty four, because remember, not only did this happen during the time of King Solomon, not only did it happen during the time of when we were slaves um, under the Babylonians, under the Assyrians, under the Greeks and the Romans and the Persians, but it also goes into these last days. Okay, read that. You told me to need verse sixty four, because when we as our, as a people when we were scattered. Yes, it's not just only in these last days. We were scattered during the time of the Assyrians. We were scattered during the time of Babylon. We were scattered during the time of Persia, okay, and Media. We were scattered during the time of the Greeks and the Romans. And we got scattered in these last days. The Spanish Inquisition, the Portuguese Inquisition, when, when we were scattered in China, you understand, under the Tang Ming and Song Dynasty, you understand? We were scattered all over. All these captivities that we've been under, we were getting scattered all over. You understand? In these islands, in these provinces owned by these kings that were set over us because of our sins. Okay? Read what you got. Deuteronomy 28, verse 64. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 64. Mm -hmm. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people. Read. From the one end of the earth, even unto the other. And mm -hmm. they thou shalt serve other gods. Come on. Which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even uh -huh. wood and stone. You see what he's saying? The Lord says, I'm going to scatter you among all people, okay? From the one end of the earth, even unto the other. He says, and there you shall serve other gods, which neither, no, neither thou nor thy fathers have known. He's going to tell you what those gods are. Wood and stone. 
even wood and stone. The wood goes into what? Christianity. That's the wooden cross. Okay, the stone goes into what? The Kaaba stone, that black rock in Mecca. Two of the most popular religions on earth, Christianity and Islam. Our, mainly we would be scattered among those because those are the two most popular religions or philosophies of men on earth. You understand? The rest, they just come after them. But Christianity followed by Islam and the rest of these other demonic abominable man-made traditions that our people are following in the lens of their captivities. You understand? That's what the Lord is saying right there. Watch this. Now, when we are scattered among these nations, okay, guess what? We're going to worship their God. In order for us to worship their God, what needs to happen? Watch this. Give me that in Psalms 106, verse 35. This is what needs to happen when, when in order for us to worship their idols. Worshiping of their idols, sacrificing unto their idols requires us to do what? To let go of our customs and culture to be assimilated into theirs. That's what we're reading. We watch God. Psalms 106, verse 35. Come on. Psalms 106, verse 35. Read. But were mingled among the heathen. They were what? Learned their... But were mingled among the heathen. We were mingled among the heathens. We mingled ourselves among the heathens. So if you are being mingled into something, that means you're, you're no longer, you're not, uh, once you are mingled, we can no longer see you. You are now, you have blended with the heathens. That is exactly what we have done as a people, as a nation, wherever we are scattered. Now we're beginning to come out of these nations. We're beginning to come out of them the people of the, us, the people of the Lord. That's why it says, come out, of, come out from among them. Let's get that real quick, okay? Revelation 18, verse four. Revelation chapter 18, verse four. Wait. Right. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, come mm -hmm. out of her, my people, that she be not partakers of her sins and that she mm -hmm. receive not of her plagues. You see that part right there when it says uh, that ye be not partakers of her sins is, is what? That you don't mingle yourself. Because what if you are a partaker, it means you have mingled yourself among these heathens and you are partaking in their sins. What is their sins? Worshipping and serving and sacrificing unto their idols. That's what it means right there. So David is saying the same thing as John the Revelator is saying. Okay, go back to where was that? Psalms 106, verse 35. Come on. Psalms 106, verse 35. Wait. But we mingled among the heathen and learned their works. He says, but we, got, we mingled ourselves among the heathen and we learned their works. We learned their customs and traditions and their wicked, demonic, abominable ways. Read on. Come on. And they served their idols. You see that thing? That's how we learn their works, by saving their idols, because we were mingled among them. Go ahead. Which were a snare unto them. So these nations, when we follow and for we follow and worship and save their customs, guess what? Those idols that we worship, Christmas and so forth, they are what? They are a snare unto us, a trap unto us. Read. Yea, they sacrificed their sons and their daughters unto devils. You see that thing? Those same devils that we read about in Deuteronomy 32, when he said what? He says, we, say, we, we worshipped, um, I'm paraphrasing it. Let's go back there. Let's read it again. Deuteronomy 32, might be verse 16 somewhere there. Let me see, let me see. Hmm. Verse 17, read that. Deuteronomy 32, verse 17. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 17. Come on. They sacrificed unto devils, not to God, mm -hmm. to gods whom they knew not, to new gods that came newly up, whom your fathers feared not. You see what he's saying? He says they sacrificed unto devils and not, not to God, to gods whom they knew not. That's what we're reading here in Psalms 106. You understand? It says, yea, they sacrificed their sons and daughters unto devils. So today is the same thing. Excuse me. Today is the same thing that our people is doing. Our people, they sacrifice their sons and daughters unto devils. 
Who are those devils? Christianity, you understand? Which comes with the image of white Jesus. You understand? That's how our people are sacrificing their sons and daughters because every Sunday they, they dress up, they go to church, so-called, because that's not church. You understand? Those are whole houses. Those are devil houses. They are worshiping the devil. Those are devil worshipers. Our people going to church on Sunday because that's no way in the Bible. You understand? But they decided, you know, we're gonna, we like this day. To hell with what the Bible is saying, we're gonna go to church on Sunday regardless of what the Bible is saying. And they take, they take their, their children and their sons and daughters tag along with them. You understand? That is the, what we're reading right there. Okay, so go back to Psalms 106, verse, 30, verse 37. Psalms chapter 106, verse 37. Mm -hmm. Yea, they sacrifice their sons and their daughters unto devils. You see that thing? Unto new girls which came newly up. Jump down to verse 40 now, come on. Verse 40. Mm -hmm. Therefore was the wrath of the Lord kindled against his people. In so much Maybe. that he abhorred his own inheritance. You see that thing? You see that thing right there? It says, therefore, was the wrath of the Lord kindled against his people, in so much that he abhorred his own inheritance, meaning he despised us. We became an enemy unto the Mosaic. You see, he didn't say hated. You understand? He didn't say not liked. He says abhorred his own inheritance because we are God's inheritance. You understand? And guess what? The Lord says, I despised you. You understand? He detested us. We became God's enemy right there. Watch this. Give me that in Isaiah 63. Okay. Get that for me. Isaiah chapter 63. I read verse 10. Isaiah 63 and verse 10. Watch this. Isaiah chapter 63 verse 10. Mm -hmm. But they rebelled and vexed his Holy Spirit. Right. Therefore, he was turned to be their enemy, and he fought against him. You see what the Lord did? We vexed his Holy Spirit. He says, therefore, he was turned to be their enemy, and he fought against them. And that's exactly what the Lord did. This we, our condition is evidence that the Most High God, we vexed his Holy Spirit, you understand? And we became his enemy, and he fought against us. That's how rebellious we became as a people. And that's how rebellious we still are as a nation this day, 2021. You understand? We still don't listen. Okay? That's why we are haters of the Most High. Why? Because we don't want to do what this Bible says do. You understand? It seems like a joy. No, we're supposed to have joy to do what this Bible says. Understand that thing. Okay? So go back to what, where he was at, Psalms 104. I mean, Psalms 106. Okay, Psalms 106, verse 40 again. Read. Psalms 106, verse 40. Mm -hmm. Therefore was the wrath of the Lord kindled against his people, Read. so much that he abhorred his own inheritance. Next verse, come on. And he gave them into the hand of the, heath, of the heathen, mm -hmm. and they that hated them ruled over them. You see that thing? That's what we read in Leviticus 26, 17. And they, those that reign over you, you understand? They that hate you shall reign over you. That's the same thing we're reading here. So the Lord, he gave, the, he gave our hand into what? He gave us into the hand of the heathen, and they that hated them ruled over them. Why? What did we do? Because we mingled ourselves among the heathens, and we learned their works. How did we learn our What works did we learn? We served their idols. We worshipped their, their idols and performed the sacrifices unto those idols. The Lord gave us up, he gave us up into the hands of the heathen. That's why they're doing the things that they're doing to us because they think, they believe that we deserve this thing because of what we did to the Lord. You understand? Go ahead. Come on. Their enemies also oppressed them. Mm -hmm. And they were brought into subjection under their hand. You see that thing? Their enemies also oppressed them. So when the Lord gave us, he gave us, he gave us up into the hands of these heathens, guess what they did? Because that's when the Lord was fighting against us because we vexed his Holy Spirit. You see, you see that? He says, their enemies also 
or press them. It meaning it not only well, it wasn't it wasn't enough that the Most High God was angry with us, but our enemies they took it a step further. That's what the Lord. That's what David is saying right there. It says their enemies also oppressed them, and they were brought into their into subjection under their hand. Meaning they feathered our affliction. They made it worse. Okay, watch this. Hold this. We coming back here. Give me that in Zechariah, because Zechariah said the same thing. That these heathens, they are what they help for their affliction. They help to forward our their affliction. Watch this. Read that. Zechariah chapter 1, verse 15. Okay, come on. Zechariah chapter 1, verse 15. Start of verse 14, actually. Start of verse 14. Read. Zechariah chapter 1, verse 14. So come the on. angel that communed with me stood unto me. Cry thou, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I am jealous right. for Jerusalem and for Zion with a great jealousy. You see what he's saying? He says, I am jealous for Jerusalem and for Zion with, with a great jealousy. Because the most High God is a jealous God. That's what we read in Exodus. Watch this. Give me the book of Exodus. Okay. Exodus 31. Give me Exodus. Okay. It's not in my notes, so I'm shooting from the hip. Watch this. Yeah, give me Exodus, mm, not Exodus 31, but Exodus 34. Yeah, give me that. Exodus chapter 34 and verse 14. Exodus 34, verse 14. Watch this. Exodus chapter 34, verse 14. Mm -hmm. For thou shalt worship no other God. For the Lord, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous God. Read that again, verse 14. Exodus chapter 34, verse 14. Mm -hmm. For thou shalt worship no other God. For the Lord, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous God. You see what he's saying? For the Lord, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous God. So Moses is letting us know how the Most High God, what happens to the Most High God when we go after these strange gods. The minute you don't apply God's commandments, you are worshiping another God. Let me say that again. The minute we break God's commandments, we're worshiping other gods. And the most High God is jealous about that thing. You understand? We are provoking him to anger when we do that. All right? So go back to where he was at now. Zechariah chapter 1, verse 14. Zechariah chapter 1, verse 14. Come on. So the angel that communed with me said unto me, Cry thou, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I am mm -hmm. jealous for Jerusalem and for Zion with the great jealousy. Come on. And I am very so displeased with the heathen that are at ease. Mm -hmm. For I was but a little displeased, and they helped forward the affliction. You see what the Lord is saying? He says, I am very so displeased with the heathen that are at ease. You see, these heathens are at ease. The Lord says he's extremely displeased by the fact that they are at ease because I was but a little displeased. The Lord says, I was displeased, but I was a little displeased. But now he says, I'm more displeased. Why? He says, because they are helping to afford the affliction. They are making it worse. You understand? They are making it worse. That's what the Lord is saying right there. Now watch this. So let's go back. Okay. Go back to Psalms 106. Verse 42 again. Psalms 106. Verse 42. Read. Their enemies also oppressed them. And mm. they were brought into subjection under their hand. You see what the Bible is saying? It says their enemies also oppress them. Meaning what? They help for the affliction. They are making it worse. Because you really have to sit down and really imagine it. Or how do these nations feel about us? They hate and despise us. That's why, you see, before you know this truth, you know something's wrong. Or, but why are these people acting like this? Why do they treat us and despise us like this? You don't know the answers. But when you come into the truth, you start to realize, really, the Lord is showing you, this is how they really feel about you. You understand? 
Look at the way they deal with us. They deal with us unjustly, okay? And because of that, guess what? In their minds, they think, no, no, we, we, it's, there's nothing wrong with us doing this because the nations, they study our history. The nations know how, how the Most High God is been dealing with us from the time of Egypt unto this day. Excuse me. The nations know that. They, they study our history and then they know and understand, okay, when they're in the midst of sin, we are able to overthrow and have overcome them. And guess what? What do they do? They help to forward the affliction. They make it worse. Because when we are in our worst condition, when we are in the worst sins, when we're doing abominable stuff, they become comfortable when we are in our sin. Let me say that again. The nations are comfortable when we are in the midst of sin. But when we return back to the Father, that's when the nation become, you understand, they become, they, they stay, they live in the state of discomfort. Understand that. So when we go out to teach on the streets, don't get it twisted. The nations understand what time it is because the nations know our history. They, they know what, 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 what we did to them when we ruled. They knew how we ruled over them when we ruled. And they knew that when we kept the commandments, the Lord was always behind us. So now as we're waking up, the reason why fear is falling upon them is because they know the history. They're not going to be fearful for no reason if they don't know our history. The reason why they are fearful is because they know our history. You understand? That's why. Okay? Read that thing again. The Psalm chapter 106, verse 42. The yes. enemies also oppressed them, and they were brought into subjection under their hand. You see that thing? And we are now under their hand. We are brought into subjection under their hands now. Go ahead. Many times did he deliver them, but they provoked him with their counsel and were brought mm. low for their iniquity. And we were brought low. Now we are at the bottom of all nations. You understand? We are at the bottom of all nations on earth. But you see that part right there? It says, many did, many, many times did he deliver them. You understand? He says, but they provoked him with their counsel. So many times the Lord delivered us and many times we provoked him with our own wicked counsels. You understand? We provoked him to anger with strange gods many times. As many times that he delivered us, that's the many times we also provoked him. That's why we are brought low this day. Okay, come on. Nevertheless, he recorded the affliction when he heard their cry. The only time when the Lord is going to regard our affliction is when we cry unto We cry unto him. When we cry unto the Lord, that's when the Lord will hear our prayers. That's when the Lord will, is going to regard our affliction. But when you don't cry out to the most High God that you are struggling, that this is hard, you need him to deliver you, the Lord is not going to deliver you. You cannot say, but the Lord sees my situation. No, the Lord wants you to go to him and speak to him. That's the sign of humility and submission. You understand? And then the Lord will deliver you. Beg for mercy, okay? Beg for mercy, the Lord will deliver you. Watch this. Now, watch this. Hmm. Give me... Give me the book of Deuteronomy 21, okay? I just, I'm still dealing with this, um, how we hate in the Lord, how we hate the Most High, okay? Watch this. Give me Deuteronomy 21, verse 18. Deuteronomy 21, verse 18. Watch this. Because a lot of the time, you know what? Before that, give me Proverbs 12, 26. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 26. Read that. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 26. Read. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 26. The righteous mm -hmm. is more excellent than his neighbor, but the way of the wicked seduces them. You see what the Bible is saying? The righteous is more excellent than his neighbor, but the way of the wicked seduces them. Because the righteous is excellent, is more excellent than his neighbor. What makes the righteous to excel his neighbor? The laws of God. You understand? Watch this. Give me that in Romans 2. He says he approves the, of the things that are more excellent, okay? Being instructed out of the law. Read that. Romans 2. Mm. 
Verse 18, Nuhishu. come on. Verse 18. Mm -hmm. And knowest his will, and approvest the things that are more excellent, being mm -hmm. instructed out of the law. So now, guess what? The righteous knows the will of the Father. The righteous, they know the will of the Father, and they approve of the things that are more excellent. The things that are more excellent is the will of the Father, which is God's laws. Okay? Because they are being instructed out of the laws of God. That's why they are more excellent than their neighbor, meaning they excel their neighbor who don't keep the commandments. Why? Because they are being instructed out of God's laws. And the only time you are going to excel your neighbor is if you are instructed out of God's laws and you apply when you are instructed out of God's commandments. You understand? So go back now. Give me that in uh, Proverbs, I mean, Deuteronomy 21, verse 18 now. Watch this. Deuteronomy 21, verse 18. Read. If a man have a stubborn and rebellious son, mm -hmm. which will not obey the voice of his father or the Ray. voice of his mother, and that mm -hmm. when they chastened him, will not hearken unto them. So now we, you have this black ashy demon of a son or a daughter. Okay, it says, if a man have a stubborn and rebellious son. So these are the characteristics of this boy. He's stubborn and he's rebellious. He's what? He's disobedient to his parents. He's not applying the first commandment with promise. He's not applying that. Watch this. Give me that in Ephesians 6. Okay, give me Ephesians 6 and 1. We're going to read that. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 1. Watch this. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 1. Come on. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Uh -huh. Read. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment mm -hmm. with promise. You see what he's saying? It says, honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise. Okay? This goes back to Exodus 20 verse 12. Go ahead. That it may be well with thee, and mm. thou mayest live long on the earth. You see that thing? You're gonna you're gonna live long when you obey your father and mother. Watch the next verse. Come on. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but mm. bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Now that verse right there, that verse right there is butchered in the Christian church. And the reason why you see the children dis disrespectful, disobedient in these Christian churches is because of this verse right here. Read that verse again. Verse 4. Come on. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 4. And mm -hmm. ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but Come bring on. them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. You see when it says, it says, fathers, don't provoke your children to wrath. You might think that you're not supposed to be correcting your children because they end up what? They end up just rebellious, being rebellious against you. No, 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 no. He's not talking about that. That's why a lot of the times when you see um, mothers and fathers, whether it's in the malls, whether you go to the shopping center, you go to the supermarket, guess what? You see a child being disrespectful to their parents and their parents don't do nothing because the pastors, this is what they push. They teach the parents not to provoke their children to wrath. But they don't read the next part of that verse. It says, but bring them up in the nature and admonition of the law. Because it, the only way you're going to provoke your children to wrath is if you don't bring them up in the nature and admonition, meaning correction of the law. What does that mean? When you don't correct, when you don't sit on your children's behind, you don't sit on their neck, that's how you provoke them to anger. That's how you provo provoke them to wrath because they're going to work stubborn. They are going to be what? Uncontrollable and disrespectful. If you don't want, if you don't, do, you, you don't, you don't chastise that behind. You have to. You understand? That's why in the truth, if you are going off, you are going to be checked. Okay, why? Because we don't want to provoke you to anger. We don't want to provoke you to wrath. That's why you're getting checked. That's why you get corrected and canceled. Why? You don't want this to happen. You understand? So, go back to where was that now. Okay? 
Deuteronomy 21, verse 18 again. Because you know what? Hmm. Before you get there, give me that in Sarah 30. Let's go. Ecclesiastes. I want to just touch on that thing. Okay. Ecclesiastes. Read chapter 30 and verse, verse 9. This is really what it goes into. Start at verse 8. Okay. Watch this. Ecclesiastes chapter 30, verse 8. Mm -hmm. And horse not broken becometh headstrong. Mm -hmm. And a child left to himself will be willful. You see that thing? That's the child that is provoked to anger because he's not brought up in the nature and the admonition of the Lord. He's not being taught God's commandments. That's why it says, a horse not broken becometh a straw, becomes stubborn, and a child left to himself will be willful because now they're going to have a self will spirit. You understand? That self will spirit, they are going to be what? They are going to be presumptuous. You understand? They're going to be uh, disrespectful. You understand? They're gonna, they're just going to be an embarrassment, an embarrassment to you. That's why we need to make sure that we teach you and set you in order. You understand? According to the how our forefathers did it in the past. Okay, read verse nine. Come on. Verse nine. Mm -hmm. Cocker thy child. Come on. And he shall make thee afraid. You see that thing? Cocker thy child, and he shall make you afraid. Meaning, play with your child. If you play with your child, you, you wink at their follies, guess what's going to happen? They're going to make you afraid. You're going to be afraid to correct them. That's the key right there. That's what he's saying right there. That's why some of you, you grew up without fathers in the house. When you come in Israel, when men talk to you, you understand hard like a man, you become emotional. You get upset. You hold a grudge. You see that thing? Well, that's simple as hell. Because if you cannot deal with men dealing with you in the truth, in the military, you're not going to be able to deal with a woman. Because a sister will be able to say things to you. You will not be able to hold your ground. You will not be able to check your spirit. Guess what you're going to do? You're going to end up being violent. You understand? You're going to, be, you're going to end up doing dumb stuff. Why? Because you are emotional. You just get upset about dumb stuff. You understand? That's why we must make sure that we correct and check you. Why? We, to prevent all of that. You understand? Read that thing again. Verse 9. Ecclesiastes chapter 30, verse 9. Cocker thy child, and he mm -hmm. shall make thee afraid. Read. Play with him, and he will bring thee to heaviness. You see what he's saying? He says, play with him, and he will bring thee to heaviness. So we don't want none of that to happen up in here, okay? That goes for the sisters too, okay? Go ahead. Laugh not with him, mm -hmm. lest thou have sorrow with him, really? and lest thou gnash thy teeth in the end. We don't want to do that. Jump down to verse 12. Verse 12. Bow Come down on. his neck while he is young, mm -hmm. and beat him on the side while he is a child, Ray. lest he wax stubborn and be disobedient unto thee, and Come so on. bring sorrow to thine heart. That's what we read in Deuteronomy 21, verse 18. You see the part right there? It says, bow down his neck while he's young, and beat him on the side when he is a child. So we cannot beat you on the side when you come up in here. But guess what? You're going to get some lashes. There's no need to beat you on the side when you're, because, you know, I mean, you're grown physically, okay? But you're going to get lashes. How are you going to get spiritual ones? You're going to get spiritual lashes to get your mind right. Why? Because we don't want we don't want you to be stubborn and to be disobedient unto the most High God and disrespect leadership. We're not going to allow that thing to go down. Understand that, okay? Right? Because, you know, black people, how they are. You laugh with them, guess what? They think now, now we can just say whatever the hell we want. No, no, no. No, it doesn't work like that. It's not gonna work like that in Israel because you don't are the you don't do that when you are in Israel's plantation. So you don't come in Israel and think you could, you'll get away with, with 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 stuff like that. That's some evil stuff. You will not get away with it. Okay, go ahead. Chastise thy son. And hold him to labor, 
Lest his Ray. lewd behavior be an offense unto thee. Lest his lewd behavior be an offense unto thee. That is what we are trying to prevent. You understand? We don't want your lewd behavior to be an offense unto us. Because when it is, it is an offense unto us, we check you, don't want to correct it. You got to kick rocks. You got to go. Okay? Until you get your mind right. Okay, let's go back. Deuteronomy 21 verse 18 again. Deuteronomy 21 verse 18. Ray. If a man have a stubborn and rebellious son, which will not obey the voice of his father or the voice of his mm. mother, and that when Ray. they have chastised him, or they have chastened him, will not hearken unto them. Ray, come on. Then shall his father and his mother lay hold on him and bring him out unto the elders of his city and unto the gate of his place. Because there was what? There was leadership. There was leadership, meaning men that was, that, that their job was to deal with the issues of the community. Because we still had communities back then. You understand? According to our tribes. Today, we have no communities, okay, because we don't own anything. So we don't have black, we don't have communities, period. We don't own nothing. You understand? Go ahead. And they shall say unto the elders of the city, this our son is stubborn and rebellious. He will not obey our voice. He is a glutton mm -hmm. and a drunkard. You see that thing? He is a, he is a he is stubborn, rebellious, he will not obey the voice of his father and mother. He is a glutton, meaning he just eats, and he's a drunkard. He eats and he drinks and he poops. That's his job. You understand? Guess what? This behavior, right? Why am I bringing this up? I'm bringing this up because this what was seen right here. This is idolatry. This is idolatry because you know sons and um, children, sons and all daughters that are rebellious. You know, disrespectful to their parents. You understand? They're worshiping, they worshiping idols. Okay? And parents who don't want to correct their kids, they play with them, they laugh with them, they wink at their follies. A child is their God. Understand that? Watch this. Give me that in Matthew, okay? Because I want to show you what they do in the Christian church because they don't want to... Um, in the Christian church, that's why you see children that are so disrespectful in the Christian church. Watch this. Give me, give me that book. Give me the book of Matthew. Okay. Give me Matthew chapter 15, verse 4. Because Christ, he spoke about this thing. Matthew chapter 15, verse 4. Come on. For God commanded Wait. thee, honor thy father and mother. And he that curseth father or mother, let him die the death. He that curses father or mother, let him die the death. Next verse. Come on. But ye say, whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, is it is a gift mm -hmm. by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me. You see what Christ is saying? He says, but whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, it is a gift. Meaning what? Meaning what? They are, he is a gift. He is a gift unto them. You see that thing? That means they must what? They must worship him. They must walk on eggshells around their son. Who does that? Today's parents. Who's teaching that? The Christian pastors. The government is pushing that. The government is pushing that garbage onto, that, onto us. You understand? It says, by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me. You see what they are saying? This is what, now Christ was rebuking this behavior. Why? Because the scribes and Pharisees were allowing this thing to happen. Watch this. Read verse 6. Verse 6. And honor not his father or his mother. He shall be free. You see what he's saying? Have you... he, hold on. Wait. He says, he shall be free. He says, and honor not his father or his mother. He shall be free. So, what the scribes and Pharisees were teaching was saying, listen, if you don't want to honor your father and your mother, you are free. You can do whatever you want. You understand? You don't have to listen to them. That's the mindset. That's why when we teach on the street, you realize that when we get on these kids, the first person to run their mouth is the black, the big black, the big black mouth, black woman, 
and the effeminate black men. They are the main ones that want to stand up for these disrespectful kids. Okay, come on. Thus have ye made the commandments of God of none effect by your tradition. You see what they did? So they made the commandment of God of none effect by their traditions, by what the government says. Okay? Meaning, you know, you, you, a, a parent does not have a right to correct their child. Now that child is now become a what? Has become that idol in the house. Now they must bow down to their own kids. You see that thing? That's what the scribes and Pharisees was teaching. That's why you see today, it doesn't matter how young they are. They are very disrespectful. You understand? But they go to church on Sunday. Every Sunday they go to church, but they will, they will be talking back to their mothers. They'll be talking back to their older brothers and older sisters and their fathers. So when they come across us on the streets and we teach with boldness, they are surprised or like, where do they get, where do they get the guts to tell this to our face? Because we read the Bible and we teach as it is written. You understand? So now, let's go back. Go back to Deuteronomy now. Okay. Deuteronomy 21. I mean, 21, 21. Read that. Deuteronomy 21, verse 21. Read. And all the men of the city shall stone him with stones that he die. So shalt thou put away evil from among you. And all Israel shall hear and fear. You see what you see how they dealt with that? And all Israel shall hear and shall fear, shall hear and fear. Because this, this message was supposed to be sent to the rest of the, the Israelite community so everybody knows. So the kids know not to disrespect their parents because now they've become a god unto them now. Because now they're afraid. They, they, he has made them afraid. That's why today a lot of these parents is uh, most of the time is single parents, mothers that are raising these kids by themselves. Their sons, they made their parents afraid to correct them. You understand? That's why they just leave them to their own devices. That's what, that's what is going on today, okay? Watch this. Now, go back to the book of Psalms now, 81. Psalms 81. Mm, there's another one. Hold on a second. Give me to show me chapter 13 now. Watch this. Deuteronomy chapter 13, verse 6. Read. If thy brother, the son of thy mother, or thy son, or thy daughter, or the wife of thy bosom, or thy friend, mm -hmm. which is as thine own soul, which entice has thee secretly, which is as thine own soul. Which is, which, which is as thy own soul, meaning what? This is your family member. It could be your brother, you understand? It could be your brother or your sister, you understand? Could be your father. That's why it says, as thine own soul, read on. Which is as thine own soul, entice thee secretly. Say, let us go and serve other gods, which thou mm -hmm. hast not known. Thou know thy father. Yes. You see the thing? Your friend, your brother, your mother, your sister, your father, your uncle, they come to you and say, let, let us go and serve other gods, which thou hast not known, thou know thy fathers. Okay, go ahead. Namely, of the gods of the people which are round about you. Nigh unto that's, what, that's exactly what we, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. He says, namely, he's giving an example now. Namely, of the gods of the people which are around about you. Today, we are mingled among these heathens, okay? That's why the Lord commanded us, says, come out, of, come, out of, come out of them, my people. You understand? And be ye separate. So now what we're reading here is saying, listen, if your, your friend, your father, your mother, your sister, even your wife and husband, they entice you secretly saying, listen, let us go and worship other gods. They're not gonna come out and say it like that. You understand? But they, they're going to they're gonna do things to entice you to go and worship other gods. That's the point. Okay? Some will be telling you about their dreams. You understand? And the dream come to pass. You say, then you believe that dream. 
guess what? They've enticed you to go and worship other gods. Okay, come on. Read verse 7 again. From the one through on in chapter 18, verse 7. Read. Namely, of the gods of the people which are round about you. Nigh unto uh -huh. thee, far from thee. From the one end of the earth, even unto the other, even unto the other end of the earth. You see that thing, it says, from one end of the earth, even unto the other. So whether they talk to you about some, some idol in across the country, you understand, across the continent, across the world, and so on and so forth. Read. Thou shalt not consent unto him, nor hearken unto him, neither shall, shall thine eye pity him, neither shalt thou spare, neither shalt thou conceal, conceal him. him. So the Lord is saying, listen, when you hear stuff like that, he says, don't consent. Don't listen to them. You understand? He says, don't pity them either when they come to you with that garbage. Neither shall thou spare, neither shall thou conceal him. Meaning what? You must put him on blast. You must expose him. That's what the Lord is saying. Read Deuteronomy chapter 13. Okay, verse 9. Yes, sir. Deuteronomy chapter 13, verse 9. But thou shalt surely kill him. Thine hand shall be first upon him to put him to death. And afterwards, the hand of all the people. You see what he's saying? That's why in verse 8 it says, don't pity him. Okay, don't spare him. Don't conceal him. He says, but thou shalt surely kill him. Thine hand shall be first upon him to put him to death. And afterwards, the hand of all the people. So when you hear that, it must not even go to the next person. You must be the first person to deal with him. That's what the Lord is saying right there. Then all the people will see you dealing with him like that. They're going to help you to destroy, to put him, this Negro, to death. Why? Because he's coming with what? He's coming with philosophies and doctrines, worshipping of other gods. He's going to what? Pollute the people. That's what the Lord is saying right there. So, I mean, today we can't do that. The Lord will be the one to do that. Okay, come on. We won't gonna, we don't, we don't stone nobody. Read. And thou shalt stone him with stones that he die, because he had sought mm. to thrust thee away from the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. You see that thing? So now, when they come to you with those things, like it's you know, it's like today when somebody brother come to you with some deep breakdown, okay. You're like, mm, yeah, I hear what you, you listen to it as like, you know what? Mm, this is strange to me. The Lord said, no, 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 don't spare the Negro. Okay, you must put him on blast right then and there. Okay, that's what the Lord is saying right there. He says, thou shalt stone him with stones that he died, but you're not going to do them. You're not going to do that. The way you're going to stone him is you bring out the scriptures to him. You rebuke him, okay? You must rebuke him, the Lord says. It says, and he says what? It says, he has sought to thrust thee away from the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt from the house of Israel, from the house of bondage. Go ahead. Verse 11, read. And all Israel shall hear and fear and shall mm. do no more any such wickedness as this is among you. You see that? So now the Most High God gave us solutions on how to deal with that, with such matters. Now let's go back to Psalms 81, okay? I went over this to show you um, idolatry. Idolatry in when we went into idolatry as a nation, you understand? And idolatry in terms of what? Sons or daughters versus the parents. And idolatry in terms of your neighbor enticing you to go into idolatry. We did that thing. So it was on a national level, okay? It was on a family level. It was on a brotherly level. You understand? It was on a neighborly level. That's how deep it was. Idolatry. And that's how we became haters of the law as a nation on all levels, okay? Watch this. Uh, let's go back. Psalms 81, verse 10 now. Psalms chapter 81, verse 10. Come on. I am the Lord thy God, 
which brought thee mm. out of the land of Egypt. Open thy mouth wide, and I will fill it. Read again. Psalm chapter 81, verse 10. I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Open thy mouth wide, and I will fill it. So now the Lord is saying, listen, he says, I'm the Lord thy God. Remember in verse 9 says, you shall have no other strange gods. Neither shall thou worship any strange god. I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Why is the Lord doing this, bringing this up? The Moses is reminding us that because in Egypt, we worship and serve strange gods. That's why he's bringing Egypt up here. He is reminding us of Egypt because that's what we were doing when we were in Egypt, worshiping strange gods and sacrificing unto them. The Lord said, no, 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 no. Remember what I took, what, where I took you out of, okay? Now he says, open thy mouth wide and I will fill it. Because in Egypt, we were filled with philosophies of the Egyptians, their customs. You understand? Watch this. Give me... Give me Leviticus chapter 18, okay? Leviticus chapter 18, because we learned a lot of strange things in Egypt, okay? So the Lord is saying, listen, remember, remember I took you out of Egypt. So what is he saying? Let go of those strange gods that you were saving and worshiping, and now open your mouth wide. I will fill it with my wisdom now, okay? Leviticus 18, verse 2, come on. Leviticus chapter 18, verse 2. Read. Really? Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, I am the Lord your God. Mm -hmm. After the doings of the land of Egypt, wherein ye dwelt, shall ye not do. Come on. And after the doings of the land of Canaan, whither I bring you, shall ye not do. Neither hey. shall ye walk in their ordinances. So now Moses is going to tell us, because remember it says, after the doings of the land of Egypt, Wherein he dwelt, shall he not do? Because what were we doing in Egypt? Because that's the question. What were we doing in Egypt? I'm going to give some examples, okay? Watch this. Read verse 9. Watch this. Because remember, it says, do not be following after the customs of the Egyptians. Because we were worshipping strange gods. I'll give you some examples. Read verse 9. Watch this. Leviticus chapter 18, verse 9. Mm -hmm. The nakedness of thy sister the daughter of thy father or daughter of thy mother, whether she be born at home or born abroad, even their nakedness, thou shalt not uncover. You see what he's saying? He says, don't sleep with your own sister. Okay, the nakedness of your sister, the daughter of your father, okay, the daughter of your, or the daughter of your mother, whether she be born at home or born abroad, even their nakedness, thou shalt not uncover. Because what were we doing in Egypt? We were we were doing this. We were doing this wickedness right here. We were what? We would sleep with our with our sisters. You understand? We would sleep with with with, with our sisters, our king's men. That's what we would do. That's why it says, after the doings of the land of Egypt, when ye dwelt, shall ye not do? Because we were doing that when we were in Egypt. Okay. Watch this. Jump down to verse eleven. You know what? Read verse ten. Read verse ten for me. Leviticus chapter 18, verse 10. Mm -hmm. The nakedness of thy son's daughter or of thy daughter's daughter, even their nakedness, thou shalt not uncover. For theirs is thine own nakedness. You see what the Bible is saying? The nakedness of thy son's daughter. So your, guess what? Your son has a daughter. When I you sleep with your son's daughter. I mean, what the hell is this? Okay. Or the daughter of or what or thy daughter's daughter, even their nakedness thou shalt not uncover, for theirs is thine own nakedness. So guess what we were doing? We were doing this in Egypt. That's why the Lord says, after the doings of the land of Egypt, when you dwelt, don't do those things no more. But today, guess what? Our people they are still involved in that. You when you look at um, day, the Daily Sun, you know Daily Sun, you're gonna find a lot of stuff we're reading it. In Leviticus 18. I mean, we went over at last about um, fathers raping their own daughters and so forth. It's a huge issue in the Eastern Cape. Okay, it's a big thing in the Eastern Cape. 
You understand? So that's the demon that's plaguing them over there. Guess what that is? That's idolatry. That is idolatry. Because when we do that, that's an example of us hating the Mosa. You understand? That's, the, that's an example of us hating the Most High God. Watch this. Hmm. Read verse 16. This is a big one. Because this what this was going on, right? This is this is the, the big one in Israel. Okay. I'm not saying the other ones are not there. They are there, of course. You understand? They're just not being pushed out in the media like this one. Read verse 16. Leviticus chapter 18, verse 16. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy brother's wife. It really? is thy brother's nakedness. You see that? Don't uncover the nakedness of your brother's wife. It is your brother's nakedness. That's a big, this is a big one in, in Israel, in the black community, where you sleep with your brother's wife. Adultery, fornication, sexual sins. That's idolatry. Because which God are you worshiping? You're worshiping the goddess of fertility, Inanna, Isis, Ashtoreth. That's who you're worshiping. That's who you're worshiping, Athena. Like you see in that movie, Eternals. Mm -hmm. You see how promiscuously they were dressed up? Yes. That's who, that's, I, that all goes back to idolatry. Understand that thing, okay? Now read verse, read verse 18. Here's another big one. Leviticus chapter 18, verse 18. Read. Neither shall thou take a wife to her sister to vex her, to uncover her nakedness beside the other in her lifetime. You see that? So now this goes in, this is three sums, menage twice. So this one right here, I mean, it's a big thing in the black community. Brothers and sisters be doing this. You understand? Having more than one woman in your bed. You see that there's a series? Yeah, that, that, that brother that passed on, uh, Shona Ferguson, okay? And his wife, Connie Ferguson. I mean, if you look at their, 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 their series, there's a lot of promiscuity they are pushing in there, okay? You see a brother like a young man, there's a, that's show King, Kings of Jovic, okay? They show this young man, he's always in bed with more than one woman. Three, four women in bed. What are they pushing? This is what we're reading here in Leviticus 18. And they make it seem it's a good thing because he's got money. So people focus on his money, they don't focus on the evils he's doing because of this money that he's got. You understand? So they think it's cool. So they are pushing evil communication. Buffet Wukoni Ferguson. Yes, sir. Because the stuff they are pushing, they are not promoting marriage. They are promoting promiscuity. And our people, they eat that. You understand? So I'm, I'm just giving an example of the evils we're doing in Egypt because what we are reading here, having more than two, more than one woman in the bedroom, that's covetousness. That's idolatry. You understand? Okay. Okay, so go back to Psalms 81. Psalms 81. Okay, verse 10. Psalms chapter 81, verse 10. Read. I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Open thy mouth wide, and I will fill it. You see what he's saying? So now, with the reason why is the Lord is reminding us of, of Egypt, because in Egypt, we're worshiping strange gods and doing strange things by worshiping those idols, okay? Then he says, open thy mouth, thy, thy mouth wide, and I will fill Feel it. The Lord says, I want to fill you with my wisdom. Just open your mouth wide. Watch this. Give me the book of Ezekiel, chapter 3, verse 1. Ezekiel. You know, instead of chapter 2. Okay. Ezekiel, chapter 2, verse 8. We're going to read down. Ezekiel 2, verse 8. I'm going to give an example with this right here. Okay. Read that. Ezekiel, chapter 2, verse 8. Mm -hmm. But thou, son of man, Hear what I say unto thee. Be not thou rebellious like that rebellious house. Open thy mouth and eat that I give thee. You see what he's saying to Ezekiel? He said, listen, uh, be, not, be not thou rebellious like that rebellious house. Which rebellious house is that? The house of Israel. Jump up to verse 3 so we know who he's talking, who he's talking about. Okay. Ezekiel chapter 2 verse 3. Come on. Ezekiel chapter 2 verse 3. 
And he said unto me, Son of man, I sent thee to the children of Israel, to a rebellious nation that has rebelled against me. They and their fathers have transgressed against me, even unto this very day. So now the house, the house that the Lord was sending Ezekiel to is the house of Israel. Okay. He's sending him to the house of Israel, which is that rebellious house. Okay, read verse 8 again. Ezekiel chapter 2, verse 8. But thou, son of man, hear what I say unto thee. Be not thou rebellious like that rebellious house. Open thy mouth and eat that I give thee. He says, open your mouth and eat that I give thee. Go ahead, verse 9. And when I looked, behold, and hand was sent unto me, and lo, a roll of a book was therein. Read that again, verse 9. Ezekiel chapter 2, verse 9. And when mm -hmm. I looked, behold, an hand was sent unto me, and lo, a roll of a book was therein. You see that thing? So the, what, the reason why he's saying open your mouth and eat that I give thee is what is going to give him what? The laws of God, the most High God. He's giving him God's commandments. He says a roll of a book that was there in the Bible, meaning learn the Bible, open your mind, your mouth and eat that I give thee, meaning open your mind, your spirit, and I'm going to fill it with what? With the, with the words that are written in a roll of this book. Go ahead. And he spread it before me. And it was written within and without. Mm -hmm. And there was written therein lamentations and mourning and woe. You see that thing? Lamentations, mourning, and woe. Because Israel was rebellious. That's why it says it was written in lamentations, mourning, and woe. Okay, chapter 3, verse 1. Come on. Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Moreover, he said unto me, son of man, Eat that thou findest, eat this roll, and go speak unto the house of Israel. You see that that's, that is that rebellious house, the house of Israel. Okay, it says, eat thou thou eat that thou findest, eat this roll. That's the Bible. That's why it says, open your mouth wide, and I will fill it. We fill it with what? The words of this roll, the words of this book. Go ahead. So I opened my mouth, and he caused me to eat that roll. He said, you see what he's saying? I opened my mouth and he caused me to eat that roll. Meaning he caused me to understand the reading. Like we read in Nehemiah 8 verse 8. Go ahead. And he said unto me, son of man, cause thy, cause thy belly to eat and fill mm -hmm. thy bowels with this roll that I give thee. Then did I eat it. And it was then in what? my mouth. Then did I eat it. Then did I eat it? You see what Ezekiel did? Then did I eat it? Meaning what? When he was taught, he received the word and he applied it. And he went to the house of Israel and taught them. That's why I said, then did I eat it? He didn't, re he didn't refuse. He did not rebel like that rebellious house. Go ahead. And it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness. You see that thing? Because what? He was not backing up against it. He was happy to receive the glorious gospel that he was being given to go and teach the rebellious house of Israel. Okay. Now, um, give me the book. Go back, go back, go back to Psalms. Okay. There's something I want out of there. Psalms. Give me that in Psalms 81 verse 10 again. Psalms chapter 81 verse 10. Read. I am the Lord thy God which brought thee mm -hmm. out of the land of Egypt. Open thy mouth wide, and I will fill it. He says, open your mouth wide, and I will fill it. He will fill it with what? The words that are written in this book. The laws, the statutes, and the commandments, and the judgments, which bring forth lamentations, mourning, and woe. That's what we read in Ezekiel chapter 2, the last verse. Okay, read verse 11 now. Psalms chapter 8, 1 verse 11. But my mm -hmm. people would not hearken to my voice, and Israel would none of me. Now that's some heavy stuff right there. So he's saying, listen, remember, Ezekiel said, he says he ate the roll. But Israel said they refused to eat the roll. 
they refuse, they refuse that thing. What is that called? Hatred. They refuse to eat the robe. That's called hatred of the Mosai. Okay, because the, the Mosai God comes with concepts. He comes with law. He comes with order and structure. And, and our people, we are conditioned to hate them. Okay? Read that again. Is he, uh, Psalms chapter 81, verse 11. But my people would not hearken to my voice, and Israel would none of me. Watch this. Give me Proverbs 129. But he, but he says, but my people, okay, but my people would not hearken to my voice, and Israel would none of me. Read that. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 29. Proverbs because as a people, one. We, hold on. As a people, the one thing that we hate to receive, the one thing that we hate to listen to is God's laws. Because our people understand one thing. Laws of God comes with what? Responsibility. Our people don't want that. Laws of God comes with accountability. Our people do not want that. Okay, come on, read that. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 29. Mm -hmm. For that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. You see what the problem is? They hated of God's knowledge. For that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. Our people do not hate, they hate the, they don't hate the Egyptian book of the dead. They don't hate that. Our people do not hate the EFF manifesto. They don't hate that. Our people do not hate the constitution of South Africa. They don't hate that. But guess what they hate? They hate the knowledge of the Most High God because it comes with responsibility. It comes with you being accountable. That's what God's laws is about. God's laws, mainly God's laws requires you to change. Our people don't want that thing. Change is kryptonite to our people. Okay? Read that again, verse 29. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 29. Read. For that they hated knowledge and mm. did not choose the fear of the Lord. Read. They would none of my counsel. They despised all my reproof. You see what he's saying? They would none of my counsel, meaning what? They did not want to listen to any of my counsel. They despised all my reproof. He says, we hated all his correction. Because what brings correction? The laws of God. So we hated all the laws of God that the Lord brought out to us by the mouth of his holy prophets. That's what he said right there. Give me that in Zechariah 7 verse 11. Our people hate law and order, okay? When we try to reset the mind of the Negro, they guess, guess what? They are going to fight you. You see that movie, The Matrix, when Morpheus was explaining to Neo that, listen, our people, they are plugged, they are so hopelessly dependent on the system that if you try to unplug them from The Matrix, they are going to fight you to protect it. That's what's going on today. You understand? Read that. Zechariah 7 verse 11. Zechariah chapter 7, verse 11. Read. But they refused to hearken and pulled they away the shoulder. They refused to hearken. They refused. They refused. They refused. Okay, come on. And pulled away the shoulder mm. and stopped their ears that they should not hear. You see what he's saying? And stopped their ears and stop their ears, meaning they block their ears. They go, la, 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 la. I don't want to hear nothing this Bible has to say. You've got the EFF manifesto, or oh, no problem. Yes, comrade. That's what they are, that's our people right there. You understand? They will listen, they will sit for hours listening to our manifesto. They say the manifesto launch and so forth, they'll go there. But guess what? When we say we're going to be at such and such, we're going to teach the gospel of Christ, guess what? They don't want to hear that. Okay, they'll tell you, no, we're good, everything is all fine. We don't need that. Because they know once you open it and read it, you're going to be hated for the fact that you are reading out of the Bible. The, you see, because everybody that we talk to on the streets, when we go and teach, our people have Bibles in their houses. The problem is not them having the Bible in the house. No, the problem is you opening it and reading it to them and showing them what the Lord is saying. 
based on what they are doing in their life and how wrong it is according to the Bible. That's where the problem comes in. They have no problem with the Bible gathering dust. They, they only have a problem when you have to read it to them out loud that this is what they need to do. Like the brother was saying, no, but you are, you are making me to be wrong. No, not me. The Bible, that's what the Bible says. But that's the mindset of our people. Okay. Read that, again. Read that thing again. Verse 11. Zechariah chapter 7, verse 11. Read. But they refused to hearken and pulled away mm -hmm. the shoulder and stopped Come their on. ears that they should not hear. That they should they stop their ears that they should not hear. Hear what? God's laws. Read on. Yea, they made their heart as an adamant stone, mm. lest they should hear the law. And they the go. Hold on. You can just read past that. It says, yea, they made their hearts as an adamant stone. Because this is a hard stone. So uh, the Lord is saying, as a people, we've made our minds to be an adamant stone. Lest they should hear the law. So verse 11 is explained in verse 12. When it says, they pulled away the shoulder and stopped their ears that they should not hear. Hear what? The law. In verse 12. Lest they should hear the law. Come on. And what? And the words which the Lord of hosts had sent in his spirit by the former prophets. Therefore came a great wrath from the Lord of hosts. You see what happens when our people don't want to hear the laws of God? It says, you see that? It says, therefore came a great wrath from the Lord of hosts. The most high God was mad. And how, when the Lord bring forth judgment, listen. It becomes something where our people like they become so shocked or like, how did this happen? Now they remember the Lord on that day. The Lord said, no, 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 I'm going to mock you. That's me mocking you when you are in trouble. I laugh at you because now you don't want to do what the Bible says. You don't want to do, you, you hate my counsels. So I'm going to leave you to, to I'm going to let you self-destruct. That's what the Lord is saying right there. Okay, read that thing again. Verse 12. Zechariah chapter 7, verse 12. Mm -hmm. Yea, they made their hearts as an adamant stone, lest they mm -hmm. should hear the law and the words which the Lord of hosts had sent in his spirit by the former prophets. Therefore came a great wrath from the Lord of hosts. Because the most high God was mad. So, guess what? When we go out there to teach our people, when you come in, when you attend the classes, you understand, you listen to classes. Guess what? Is the Lord softening your spirit to receive his word? That's what the Lord is doing. Because the Lord says, we don't want to hear the law because, and we made our mind as an adamant stone. So when you listen to classes and, and you seek counsel and so forth, the Lord is softening your spirit so you can receive. So what is that called? Mercy. That's the mercy of the Lord right there. That right there is the mercy of the most High God. Understand that thing, okay? Go back to where he was at now, okay? Psalms 81. Psalm verse 11, 81, again. verse 11. Mm -hmm. But my people would not hearken to my voice, and Israel would none of me. Wait. So I gave them up unto their own hearts last. And they walked in their own counsels. You see what the Bible is saying? So now in this verse you are seeing, it says, so it says, you see, these are steps. The Lord said, okay, open your mouth wide in verse 10. It says, and I will fill it with his wisdom. It says, but my people refused. They didn't want to hearken to my voice. And Israel would none of me. Meaning we don't want to do nothing with the Lord. He says, now that this is the judgment. So I gave them up unto their own hearts last. Why? Because we made our minds as an adamant stone. You understand? And they walked in their own counsels. So the Lord said, okay, you don't want to listen to me. I'm going to let you self-destruct them. Okay? I'm going to let you self-destruct. Those that have not blown up, maybe they will receive mercy and you. And look at the ones that have blown up as an example of what not to do. Then they will repent. You understand? Watch this. 
Give me that in Romans 1 25. Romans chapter 1, verse 25. The Lord says, I'm going to give you up then to your own devices and see what your end shall be. Okay? Read that. Romans 1, verse 25. Romans chapter 1, verse 25. Mm -hmm. Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator, who is blessed Come forever? On. Amen. Read it again. Romans chapter 1, verse 25. Mm -hmm. Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator, who is blessed forever? Amen. So it says, who changed the truth of God into a lie? Who changed the truth of God into a lie? The heathens that the Lord, he gave our hands into. Because guess what? When we broke God's commandment, like we read in Psalms 106, the most High God, he says, I'm going to give, I gave you, I gave them into the hands of the heathen who oppressed them. So now the heathens that are oppressing us, who's the head, who's the head of the villages? Who's the, who's the main culprit that is controlling all these other nations that have us in slavery? The white man, Esau, Edo. Okay? So he's the one that changed the truth of God into a lie. What is the truth of God? The laws of God. And worship and serve the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. So now in the lands of our captivity, the people that have us in slavery, now they've changed the truth of God into a lie. God says, men and men and women come together. You, you will be able to what? you'll be fruitful and multiply. The white man says, no. If you want to sleep with a man as a man, it's okay. Don't worry. You are a man, you want to be changed into a woman. Don't worry, I got signs for that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you a vagina, okay? You are a woman, you want, you want balls. Guess what the laws of, mm, mm, the white man says, don't worry. I'm gonna provide them for you. You see that thing? So now it says, and serve the creature more than the creator. So now they are saving creation. The same way they worship, they worship, they, they teach the parents not to correct their kids. They start to worship their kids now. You understand? That is what's going on now because we are mingled among these heathen and we, are learned, we have learned their works. Well, our people, because we are no longer in the world doing those things that they are doing, but the prayer is they can come in as we go out to teach them, okay? Go ahead. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections. Stop right there. For even because of verse 25, hold on, wait. Because of verse 25, it says, God has gave them up unto vile affections. Disgusting affections, okay? Idolatry. Because when you worship anything other than the most High God of heaven and earth, guess what? You have a vile affection. Okay, come on. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. Because you see, it says the women would change the na their natural use into that which is against nature. So a woman's natural use would be to do what? To bear children. But today, the black woman, does, they don't want that. The black woman wants to be above the black man. I'm just dealing with our nation because that's the nation I care about. Okay. The black woman wants to be a man, physically and spiritually. That's why she dresses like the man. They dress like their fathers, okay? They dress like their fathers. So that's just one example. They want to be equal to them. They want to, they want to be in the front when the man is at the back. That's the mindset. Of, that's the black woman today. Today. You understand? So the most High God is in, because of that, guess what? You are going to what you're gonna have a vile affection because of that thing. Okay, now um give me the book of Isaiah, chapter one, verse nine. Watch this. We're still dealing with that the woman changing their natural use into that which are which is against nature. You know what? Mm, I didn't think I wanna go into the but I'll go into it. Go back to Romans, okay? Romans chapter one, read verse 27 now. Romans 1, 27. Watch this. Romans chapter 1, verse 27. Read. And likewise also the men, leaving mm. the natural use of the woman. 
bend in their lust one toward another. Men mm -hmm. with men working, mm. men with men working that which is unseeming, unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was meat. Which was what? Which was good? The meat, the, the error, the judgment of their error, which was good for that punishment. Now, what is it says, and likewise also the men. So not only did the black woman change her natural use into that which is against nature, the black man has done the same thing. The black man has left the, the natural use of the woman. The black man has left the natural use of the black woman. Oh, you understand? He's bent in his lust one toward another. Now the black man is lusting after another man, okay? Men with men, just be sword fighting. I mean, what the hell is this? Hmm? You see that? Waking that which is unseemly, is unnatural, okay? Re and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was meat. Watch this. Give me that in uh, Isaiah chapter 1, verse 9. Isaiah 1 and 9. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 9. Come on. Except the Lord of hosts had left unto us a very small remnant, we should mm -hmm. have been as Sodom, and we should have been like unto Gomorrah. You see what he's saying? He says, except the Lord of hosts has left unto us a very small remnant. The remnant is what? Is the prophets, as we, we are the prophets back on the earth this day. You understand? We are those remnants that are left on this earth. God says, if I had not sent the remnants, guess what was going to happen? He says, we should have been as Sodom and we should have been like unto Gomorrah. Meaning what? All 12, we would be homosexuals. Both men and women. That's what the Lord is saying right there. If it wasn't for the prophets. Now that's heavy. That's a heavy, heavy statement right there. If it was not for us going to the streets, the Lord raising us up in these last days, is as, as a nation, all of us, we would be like unto Sodom and we should have been like unto Gomorrah. Let that sink in. Let that thing sink into your spirit. You understand? That's why today you see our brothers, it's easy for our brothers to be effeminate. It's easy for our sisters to act like men. The only people that are making sure that our sisters get their minds right, don't walking around like manly women. Our brothers get their minds right. They don't want to what? They don't want to walk around like be, being females and so forth. The only thing that can sever that wickedness is the laws of God. Because the laws of God will teach you right from wrong. Okay? That's what that's going into. Now, let's go back to Psalms 81. Okay? Psalms 81. Read verse 13 now. Psalms chapter 81, verse 13. Mm -hmm. Oh, that my people had hearkened unto me, and Israel had walked in my ways. Now the Lord is coming back. He says, oh, I wish you had hearkened unto me. If only you would listen to my voice, like we read in verse, uh, like we read in verse 11, he says, but my people will not hearken to my voice, and Israel would none of me. If only we did that, that we read in verse 11. Guess what? Read that again. Okay, verse 13. Psalms chapter 81, verse 13. Great. Oh, that my people had hearkened unto me, and Israel mm -hmm. had walked in my ways. Come on. I should soon have subdued their enemies and turned my hand against their adversaries. You see what the Lord is saying? He says, if only you would listen, if only we as a nation would listen unto him, you understand, and walk in his ways. He says, I should soon have subdued their enemies and turned my hands against their adversaries. So we are really the reason why we're still in captivity. Because the Lord is telling us, listen, if only you just listen to me, I'm, I will soon, I will quickly overthrow your enemies. That's what, I, that's what the Lord is saying. So who's delaying us being delivered is not the Mosai, it's us. We are the ones that are delaying the second coming of Christ. Yes, we're doing that. Read the verse again. Read 13 and 14 together. Okay. Psalms chapter 81 verse 13. 
Right? All that my people had hearkened unto me, and Israel mm -hmm. had walked in my ways. I should soon have subdued their enemies and turned my hand against their adversaries. What's this? Now, give me that in Deuteronomy 32, 26. We're coming back here. Deuteronomy 32, verse 26. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 26. Read. I said, I would scatter them into corners. I would mm -hmm. make the remembrance of them to cease from among men. You see what the Bible is saying? This is future prophecy during the time when Moses wrote this. It says, I will scatter them into corners. That's where we are, the four corners of the earth. I would make the remembrance of them to cease from among men, to stop. Our remembrance would stop among men. Give me how it is stop. Give me that in Psalms 81. I mean, Psalms 83. Okay. Psalms chapter 83. Read verse 2. This is how our remembrance would cease from among men. Our remembrance is not just going it, to, this, this, Moses is letting us know that's not going to happen by accident, that your remembrance is just going to disappear from the face of the earth. No. There are things that are going to happen on this earth that you will no longer remember that you are a Jew. Okay. Psalms 83 verse 2. Read that. Psalms chapter 83 verse 2. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. You see that thing? That David is like, Asa, this is what, that's the psalm of Asa. It says, for lo, thine enemies, he's talking to the Mosai now, thine enemies, O Lord, make a tumult. Meaning what? A, an angry gathering, a plot, a scheme. You understand? A conspiracy. And they that hate thee, they that they hate the most high, have lifted up their head against the most high. They lifted up themselves as God, as Christ, and the Jews. That's how they lifted up their head against the most high. Go ahead. Verse 3. Read. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted mm -hmm. against thy hidden ones. That's the conspiracy right there. What was, the, what was the point of this conspiracy? Where the nations, they taken crafty counsel against God's people and consulted against the hidden ones. That goes into your Balfour Declaration. You understand? That was written in 1917. You understand? And came into pass in 1948. The British mandate to make the, to make the white Hebrew Israelis to go back to our land to go back to the land that's not theirs. You understand? That's what happened. That's why he says, um, and consulted against thy hidden ones, the crafty council. Go ahead, verse four. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation mm -hmm. that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. You see what he's saying? that the name of Israel, so the Balfour Declaration or in 1917, that's when they wrote that letter, you understand? But guess what? They didn't, they, it, that thing did not come to pass until 19, 1948, three years after World War II, you understand? But 1917, that letter was written three years after World War I, so that they can get the sympathy from the world. You understand? After they got world sympathy from the world, guess what? The British and the American government put those bastards in our land, calling themselves Jewish. You understand? That's what we're reading here. Now watch this. Once they did that, what did they do? Give me that in first Esther's 5. I'm going to show you what they did, okay? What they did. How did we, how did our remembrance cease from among men? How did that happen? Okay? This is how it happened. Uh, first Ezra 5. Read verse, start of verse, yeah, read verse 72. First Ezra chapter 5, verse 72. Read. But the heathen of the land, lying heavy upon the inhabitants of Judea, and holding them straight, hindered their mm -hmm. building. They did what? 
hindered their building. They hindered us from building our nation back up. Back then it was physical, today it's spiritual, but they are still hindering us. You understand? Go ahead. And by their secret plots and popular mm. persuasions and commotions. You see that? And by their secret plots, that's the what that's the crafty council. That right there, that's the crafty council is talking about. But by their secret plots and popular persuasion, that's their media. Because in 1948, when they made that official, that okay, by the way, going forward, these bastards over here, these white Hebrew Israelis calling themselves Jewish, they are now the new, the real, the new Jews in Israel who left. They came back white, but the real Jews left Israel black. Okay. But how did they push it? They used the media to push that thing. They used the media to make everybody believe in that lie that they are the Jews when they are not, but they are the synagogue of Satan. Go ahead. They hindered the finishing of the building all the time that King Cyrus lived. So okay, they were hindered the from building. You skipped a word there. It says there are secret plots and popular persuasions. And what? I want that word right there. And commotions. Commotions. You see what? We know what commotions is. They get the public, you know, they go to the, they go to the public court. They get the nations to agree with it through the media. Commotions. That goes into what? Mob rule. Okay? Mob rule. If the majority say yes, that means it's a yes, when it's not even a yes. Not even close being a yes. But guess what? The public, if the public says yes, then guess what? In the, in the name of the public, is true. Even when it's not. That's what Ezra is teaching us here. Okay? Let's go back, okay? Psalms 83, Psalms 83, okay, verse three. Psalms chapter 83, verse three. Read. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted mm -hmm. against thy hidden ones. Read. They have said, come, and let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. That the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. So these nations came together and what? They cut us off from being a nation. That's how it came to pass. What Moses said in Deuteronomy 32, 26. Okay. So that's what we're reading here. Cut, let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. Go back to Deuteronomy 32, 26 now. Now we understand what, 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 what the, the book of Psalms is saying right there and what Moses was, was going into. Okay, read. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 26. Come on. I said, I would scatter them into corners. Mm -hmm. I would make the remembrance of them to cease from among men. You see what he's saying? I would make the remembrance of them to stop from among men. That's why it says, let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. Go ahead. Were it not that I feared the rest of the enemy, lest their adversaries should behave themselves strangely, and lest they should say, our hand is high, and the Lord has not done all this. So you see what they are saying? Because remember, the law says, I'm going to make the remembrance of you, Israel, to cease from among men. They're going to cut you off from being a nation. He says, were it not that I feared the wrath of the enemy. You understand? Lest their adversaries should behave themselves strangely. So the reason why the Lord is telling Moses, listen, I'm the one that's going to be doing this, but my enemies, the enemies of God, they're going to think they are the ones that are doing this. That's why they are what? They have, they have so much boldness because they, they think and believe that they are that, that's them. They are the ones that's doing it, okay? Our hand is high and the Lord has not done all this. That's the mindset. So the Lord says, I'm the one that's going to do this so that the enemies don't do this. But they say it anyway. They say it regardless, okay? Read on. For they are a nation void of counsel. 
Mm. Neither is there any understanding in them. You see what the Lord is saying about us? He says, for they are a nation void of counsel. Because remember, the Lord says, I'm going to give you to your own hearts, uh, hearts last, and they walked in their own counsels. That's what we read in Romans 1.25 down. We're reading it again right here. Read that again. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 28. Mm -hmm. For they are a nation void of counsel. Neither Wait. is there any understanding in them. Come on. Oh, that they were wise, that they understood this, that they would consider their latter end. Now that's heavy right there. That they would do what? That they would consider their latter end. It says, you see what he's saying? It says, oh, that they were wise. It says, I wish they was wise, that they understood this, that which Moses was teaching us, okay? That they would consider their letter and meaning. You have no idea how bad this is going to get. That's what the, Moses was teaching us. It says, if only they were wise to see what's going to happen in the last days, they would not do this. They will hearken unto my voice. You understand? Get that into Tom chapter 4, verse 28. We didn't listen to Moses, okay? Watch this. Deuteronomy 4, verse 28. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 28. Come on. And there ye shall serve gods, the work of men's mm. hands, wood and stone, which neither see, nor hear, nor eat, nor smell. Because guess what? We would mingle ourselves among these nations and we would learn their customs and serve their wicked, demonic, demonic, the demonic abominable idol. We would worship them. Our people are going to spend money on this. This month, they're going to spend so much money in the name of Christmas. Our people are waiting for that. That's why when you go outside, our people are in a drinking mood. You can't tell them nothing. You understand? Letting you know this whole thing is demonic. Our people are under a spell. Our people are under a spell. You understand? And there's, a, there's an evil spirit that jump on them during this time too. You understand? Okay. Read on. Verse 28. No, no. Verse 29. Verse 29. Deuteronomy. Chapter 4. Verse 29. Go ahead. But if from thence thou shalt seek the Lord thy God, thou shalt find mm -hmm. him. If thou seek him with all thy heart and with all thy soul. Meaning what? Don't be double-minded. Come on. When thou art in tribulation and all when these things are come upon thee. Now, what did he say? When thou, art, when, when thou art in what? When thou art in tribulation. When thou art in tribulation. Right now, are we not in tribulation? Yes. Because we just read it in Deuteronomy 32. That's why it says, oh, that they were wise, that they would understand this and consider their letter end. Because in the letter end, right, we are in tribulation. Get that in Revelation 2 verse 9. Because Christ here to remind us of this thing. Because we forgot. Okay. When thou art in tribulation, because that's where we are at. Read that. Revelation 2 verse 9. Revelation chapter 2 verse 9. Uh -huh. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I Wait. know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. So Christ is telling us, he says, listen, he says, I know your works. I know the works that you put in this truth. And I know your struggles as well. I know that you are catching hell out here. Okay. And poverty. You see our living conditions? We live in the slums, okay? But thou art rich, and I know the blasphemy of them we say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. That's Amalek over there in our land, calling themselves Jewish. But yes, we are in tribulation. So let's go back to Deuteronomy 4 now. Okay, Deuteronomy 4 verse 30. Let's read that. Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 30. Mm -hmm. When thou art in tribulation and all these things are come upon thee, even in the latter days, if mm. thou turn to the Lord thy God and shall be obedient unto his voice. You see what he's saying? 
it says, all these things are come upon thee, even in the latter days. That's why Moses in Deuteronomy, then the Deuteronomy 32, it says that if they were wise, that they would consider their latter end because they are not listening to what's going to happen if we break these laws. We're just too excited that all that the AI Moses, we hear you, we're going to do that. You understand? We did that. And guess what? When we broke all the laws, the tribulation, the judgment came upon us. And look where we are now. Our ass is enslaved. You understand? We're in slavery right now because of that thing. Because we didn't take Moses seriously when he was teaching us in the spirit of the Lord. Okay? Watch this. Go back to Psalms 81 now. Psalms 81 verse 15. Let's read that. Psalms chapter 81 verse 15. Come on. The haters of the Lord should have submitted themselves unto him. Whoa, but they whoa, are tied. Whoa, whoa. Hold on. Wait, wait. Read verse 15 again. So, because remember, verse 14 and 13, the Lord is letting us listen. I'm going to judge you because you don't want to listen to me. I'm going to use these enemies to subdue and destroy you. Okay? But verse 15 is the key because had we listened from verse 8 down, none of this would have happened to us. Okay? Read that, verse 15. Come on. Psalm chapter 81, verse 15. Come on. The haters of the Lord should have submitted themselves unto him. Stop right there. The haters of God should have submitted themselves unto him. Who's the haters of God? That would be us. That would be us in verse 8. Read verse 8 again so we get it. Okay, come on. Psalm chapter 81, verse 8. Read. Hear, O my people, and I will testify mm -hmm. unto thee. Come on. O, o Israel, if thou would hearken unto me. So now you see the haters of God they are explained in verse 8. It's us, the 12 tribes of Israel. We are the haters of the Most High God. Why? Because God gave us laws, we broke them. You understand? We didn't want to listen to God's counsels. We followed our own wicked, our own wicked mind. And guess what happened to us? We found ourselves in slavery captivity, which is where we are now. Scattered all over the world, confused, lost in the source. Okay? That's what's going on right now with us. You understand? But the, because of the manifold mercies of the Most High God, he's waking us up to return back unto him. That's the mercy of the Lord right there. Okay? Read again. Verse 15. Come on. Psalm chapter 81, verse 15. Read. The haters of the Lord should have submitted themselves unto him. Read. But their time should have endured forever. Because had we submitted ourselves unto the Most High God, our time should have endured forever. I mean, we stupid, man. We dumb as hell. I mean, right now we have to now be listening to Esau and his red face. I don't want to be listening to that. You understand? But now we have to do that now because of what? Because of what we did or what we did not do. Listen, that's some heavy stuff right there. When I think about that stuff, really, I just get depressed just for a second, okay? But I get my mind right because the Lord is waking us up, you understand? So we can rule over all these devils. Read again verse 15. Mm. Mm. Psalms chapter 81 verse 15. Read. The haters of the Lord should have submitted themselves unto him, but their time should have endured forever. But we should have endured forever. You understand? Watch this. But we get, we're getting our flavor back. We're getting our flavor back. Give me Luke 19 verse 12. Luke 19. Okay? Because we are those haters of God that the book of Psalms is making that. Asaph is talking about. We are those haters of God because we don't want to keep his laws. We like to worship the gods of these other nations, which are not gods. They're just idols. Dumb rocks. Dumb uh, wooden stocks. Okay? Read that. Luke 19 verse 12. Read that thing. Come on. Luke chapter 19, verse 12. Mm -hmm. He said, therefore, a certain noble man went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. So this certain noble man, is, Christ is talking about himself here. Christ is talking about himself. 
He says he went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. When did this certain nobleman go into a far country? Give me that in Acts chapter 1 verse 9. This is when the nobleman went to a far country, okay, to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. Acts chapter 1 verse 9. Read that. Acts chapter 1 verse 9. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. So now this is when Christ was going back to the Father, okay? He was beamed up into a chariot, because that's what the cloud is. He was taken up, and he was, he was taken up, and he was, he was received into a chariot. Get that, get that in Psalms, okay? So we understand that the cloud is not talking about that white puff of smoke up there. Psalms 104, verse 3. Read that. Psalms chapter 104, verse 3. Read. Who layeth the beams of his chambers in the waters, who maketh mm. the clouds his chariot, who walketh upon the wings of the wind. He walketh upon the wings of the wind. So now the cloud is going into what? The chariot, the transportation system. Okay, go back to where he was at now. Acts 1 and 9. Acts chapter 1 verse 9. Come on. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And a chariot received him out of their sight. That's when, that's when the certain nobleman went and what he went to a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. Go ahead. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, uh -huh. two men, two men stood by them in white apparel. It says, while they looked up steadfastly when, because they never saw a man fly. So now they are seeing Christ is flying up into a chariot and the chariot goes back to the Father, the third heaven, okay? So now they are, they are I mean, you marvel as well. You look steadfastly towards heaven, okay? But now the angels of the Lord appeared before Peter, James, and John. Go ahead. Which also said, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? Mm -hmm. This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. You see what they are telling you, listen, the same way you see Christ being received by a chariot and he's going back to the Father, that's how he's going to descend into this earth. That's war time. Mm. I want to be dead on that day like Habakkuk says. Okay? But guess what? The Lord is saying in Thessalonians, he says, but we wish our life that day. Mm, that's some heavy stuff right there. Mm, let me see if I want to continue. Mm, that's it on that. That's it on that. Let's go back. Luke 19 verse, Nick, Luke 19 verse 12. Because you know, when you, you die in this truth, the Lord says, I'm going to wake you up. The dead in Christ shall rise first. Okay? The dead in Christ shall rise first. They're going to wake up first. So don't be scared, brothers and sisters. Okay? The Lord called you, call you home. Uh, swiftly and speedily in these last days you praise the lord we praise the lord too because we know we're going to see you in the kingdom you understand okay read that luke 19 verse 12 again luke chapter 19 verse 12 go ahead he said therefore a certain noble man went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. Go ahead. And he called his ten servants and delivered them mm. ten pounds and said unto them, Occupy till I come. He says, Occupy till I come. He says, And delivered them ten pounds and said unto them, Occupy till I come. These ten pounds, this goes into treasure. Give me that in uh, Proverbs, okay? This goes into treasure, pound. Treasures. Give me Proverbs chapter 2, read verse 4. 
Proverbs chapter 2, verse 4. Mm -hmm. If thou seekest her as silver and searchest for her as for his treasures. So now this goes into wisdom, okay? Wizards, you must look after, you must go after wisdom as silver and you, as if you're searching for hidden treasures because that's what this is going into. Wisdom of the most high. Go ahead. Then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the mm. knowledge of God. You see that thing? He's telling you what these treasures are. The treasures is the knowledge and the wisdom of the Lord. When you understand the fear of the Most High God, you will understand the wisdom of the Most High. Go ahead. For the Lord giveth wisdom. Out of mm -hmm. his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. You see that thing right there? So the Lord will give you wisdom and out of the Lord's mouth comes knowledge and understanding. That is those hidden treasures. That's the 10 pounds we're reading about. Go back to where he was at now. Luke chapter 19, verse 13. Read that. Luke chapter 19, verse 13. Mm -hmm. And he called his 10 servants and delivered them 10 pounds and said unto them, Occupy till I come. He says, Occupy till I come. What does he mean? Give me that in Revelation 2. Occupy till I come. Revelation chapter 2, okay, verse 25. Read that. Revelation chapter 2, verse 25. Come on. But that which ye have already, hold fast till I come. You see what he's saying? But that which ye have already, what we have already? Give me that in First Maccabees 12. What do we have already? Hmm. First Maccabees, okay. I think it's verse 9. First Maccabees 12, verse 9. Let me look at it. I'm shooting from the hip on this one. Okay. Yeah, that's the one right there. Read it. First Maccabees chapter 12, verse 9. Therefore, we also, albeit we need none of these things, for that mm -hmm. we have the holy books of scripture in our hands to comfort us. You see what they are saying? It says we need none of these things. Because that we have the holy books of scripture in our hands to comfort us. This is that which we have already. He says, occupy, hold fast till I come. Occupy it, meaning what? Occupy your mind, your time in the laws of the Most High God and learn this and apply it. That's what he's saying right there. Okay? Go back to where he was at now. Revelation 2, verse 25. Revelation chapter 2, verse 25. Come on. But that which ye have already, hold fast till I come. So that which we have already is the Bible, which we must hold it fast. We must take care of it. We must apply. We must study it and understand what it's saying. Okay? Go back to Luke 19, verse 13 again. Luke chapter 19, verse 13. Mm-hmm. And he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds and said unto them, Occupy till I come. That which we have already, which is the holy books of scripture in our hands to comfort us, that is what we are going to occupy until the Lord returns. Read. But his citizens hated him. But his what? And, but his citizens hated him. But his citizens, his own people hated him. But his citizens hated him. What was the hate? Wait, wait, what is the hate? The hate is the fact that you are being commanded to do what? You are being commanded to occupy till the Lord returns. Take the 10 pounds, multiply these 10 pounds, and occupy till the Lord returns. That's what he's saying right there. But he says, but his citizens hated him. Where's the hate coming from? Because now you have to sit down and study. That's why some of you is like pulling teeth out when you have to study. That's what we're reading here. Read the verse 14 again. So we understand Luke, what he's saying. Come on. Luke chapter 19, verse 14. Read. But his citizens hated him mm -hmm. and sent a message after him saying, we will not have this man to reign over us. You see that thing? We don't want this man to rule over us. What are they saying? We don't want him to be our God. We don't want him to be our king. 
We want somebody else to be our God and our king. Guess what? That's idolatry. That's idolatry. That's, the, that's why it says the haters of God. How did we hate the Lord? We didn't want the Lord to reign over us. Because for the Lord to reign over us, he's going to reign over us with what? With law and order and instruction and wisdom. That's why he says his citizens hated him. Just like they hated Christ. Give me John 15 verse 18. Okay. Just like they hated Christ, guess what they're going to do to us? They're already doing that. John 15 verse 18. Watch this. John chapter 15 verse 18. Uh -huh. If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. You see that thing? Because what was Christ doing? Christ was teaching the commandments. Read verse 10 so we get it. John chapter 15 verse 10. Mm -hmm. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love. Even mm -hmm. as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. You see what he's saying? He's so, so he's saying, keep the laws of God and abide in my love as I've kept my, kept my father's commandment and abide in his love. So when you do the opposite, guess what happens to us? We don't abide in the love of the father, but we abide in the hate of the father. Guess what that means? You are provoking the Lord to anger, to destroy. That's what he's saying right there. Okay, jump down to verse 19 now. John chapter 15, verse 19. Go ahead. If you were of the world, the world would love his own. Mm. But because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. You see what he's saying? He says, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hated you. So now that's heavy right there. Read the next verse. This is some heavy stuff. Go ahead. Remember the word that I said unto you, the servant uh -huh. is not greater than his Lord. Hmm. Really? If, they, if they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. You know what? You know what's heavy about that verse? Is that the servant is not greater than his law. Meaning what? What the cup that Christ drank out of, we're going to drink out of the same cup. But it says, if they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they, they, he says, they will keep yours also. Watch this. Give me the book of Matthew 10, verse 28. We are going to be persecuted, brothers. Don't get it twisted. Okay, you just better make sure, Matthew 10, 23, make sure that you prepare yourself. Some of you, you are still sucking on your mother's breast. You better let go of that breast. Okay, watch this. Matthew 10, 23, come on. Matthew chapter 10, verse 23. Wait. But when they persecute you in this city, flee ye into another. For mm. verily I say unto you, ye shall not have gone over the cities of Israel Till the Son of Man be come. You see what he's saying? This is Christ speaking. He's, tell, he's talking to us about the last days. He said, Listen, you are going to be persecuted. That's why he says his citizens hated his guts. That's the same thing today. When we arrive, they say, Here comes the witches. They say, We are witches. We are performing witchcraft. When we read the Bible, you cannot make this stuff up. But you see what he's saying right there? It says, But when they persecute you in this city, Flee ye into another. Isn't that the same thing that he told us during the time when he was during the time of Rome? When he says, when you see Jerusalem compassed with armies, flee into the mountains. That's what we did. We ran. That's why now today we are in South Africa calling ourselves Bantus. Okay? Because we ran. We followed that council. Those are our forefathers that remained. They were put to death, many of them. You understand? By the Romans. Okay? But you have to be willing to pick up and leave. Like a soldier. You must be willing to just pack up your stuff and go. Go into another city and dwell there. That's what he's saying right there. Okay? Give me that in 2nd Ezra 16, verse 39. Watch this. Second Ezra, chapter 16, verse 39. Mm -hmm. 
even so shall not the plagues be slack to come upon the earth and the world mm. shall mourn and sorrows shall come upon it on every side. So now Ezra's is prophecies letting us know, listen, these, 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 these plagues, they are not going to stop. They just, they just want to keep on coming. So this COVID-19 is nothing compared to what's coming. That's what the Lord is telling us right there. He says, even so shall not the plagues be slack to come upon earth, the earth to come upon the earth and the world shall mourn and sorrow shall come upon it on every side. That's why it says now South Africa, South Africa has officially entered the fourth wave of COVID-19. This is nothing. What's coming mm, is going to be so bad that it's going to make your ears to tingle. Okay? And you have to be willing to pack up and go. You have to be willing to just pack up and leave. Yeah? So don't be spiritually Lord's wife where you are be holding on to dumb stuff here. Understand that? You must be willing to pack up and go to the bundus here. You must be willing to pack up and do stuff like that. You understand? Hmm. I said something there. Keep going. Verse 40. Oh, my people, hear my word. Mm -hmm. Make you ready to the battle. And in those evils, be even as pilgrims upon the earth. Be even as what? Be even as pilgrims upon the earth. He says, be even as pilgrims upon the earth. Be even as pilgrims upon the earth. So what is that talking about? You are a denizen. You are just afforded certain rights. You understand? A pilgrim, meaning you are, you are seeking for refuge. You are a refugee. Watch this. Give me that in Hebrews 11. Start with 13. Hebrews 11, verse 13. Watch this. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 13. Come on. These all died in faith, not mm -hmm. having received the promises, but having seen them afar off and were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. That's talking about our forefathers. They, these, you can read about them from verse 4. Abel, Enoch, okay, our forefather Noah, our forefather Abraham, our foremother Sarah, so on and so forth. He's talking about them. He says, but, and they confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. He says, we must do the same. Why? Keep reading. Verse 14. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. You see what he's saying? He says, they that say such things, what are those such things? We, are, we just read about them in verse 18 when it says, they confess that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. How do we confess it today? We say, no, South Africa is not our homeland. We're from Jerusalem. That's our homeland. We are, guess, guess what we are saying? We are declaring plainly that we are what? We seek a country because this is not our country. Okay, come on. Verse 15. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. You see what they say? It says, if we were mindful of that country, which is Jerusalem, that glorious city, from whence they came out, because that's where we come from, they might have had an opportunity to return. Because how could we have had an opportunity to return? We read it earlier in Psalms 81. When it, then, when it says, had we listened unto him, because well, I'm paraphrasing it, it says we would have, we would have, we would have what we would have, we should have endured forever. We should have endured forever if only we had listened to our Father, which is in heaven, by the mouth of His holy prophets. We should have what? We should have gone back. We should have been ruling right now. Okay, read that again. Hebrews chapter eleven verse fifteen. Mm -hmm. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. Come on, because, hold on. You see this verse right there? It's a loaded statement. It's saying, and truly, if they had been mindful of that country, how do you become mindful? That means it's in your mind. You think about it. Now, that's the first thing. Now, you think about Jerusalem. This whole time you've been, your whole life, you've been saying, thinking, no, is normal. 
Udula wali bunduzi is normal. Now you you are made to work to be mindful of the country where you come from. Who's gonna do that? The prophets will do that thing. So you remember. Now that's when you become mindful of that country. So then it says, when they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. How do you receive that opportunity? Today is called the grace of the Lord. The prophets bring the truth out. They bring to your remembrance who you are. Then once you remember who you are, you start to remember what was given to you for you to be on top. Now you start to apply the commandments. That's when you get the opportunity to return back to your country, where we come from, Jerusalem. So this is a loaded statement right here that um, the Apostle Paul is giving unto us. Go ahead, verse 16. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 16. Mm -hmm. But now they desire a better country. That is they heaven. Want. They desire a better country. We desire a better country. What better country is there than Jerusalem? There is no country better than Jerusalem, our homeland where we come from. Okay, but now they desire a better country that is in heaven. What does that mean? Rulership. That's what he's talking about right there. But now they desire a better country that is in heaven. Rulership. You understand? Because that's where we want to come. We want to go back to that because we know when we go back to that, our status is going to change. We're not going to no longer be in a low estate. Ray. Wherefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. For he has prepared for them a city. That's the holy city of Jerusalem. It says, because we, were because we desire a better country, you know, that is in heaven. That's why we teach our people, keep the commandments so you can get the kingdom, so you can get up out of here and go home. God, he says, when we do that, when we teach and apply the laws of God and teach our people that, he says, at that point, the Lord is, the most High God is not ashamed to be called our father, for he had prepared for them a city. He's prepared already. Our job is to fight the spiritual war so we can go back. You understand? That's what we're reading right there, to be as pilgrims. So you must be willing to pack up and leave. You sisters as well, think about that. Because, listen, it's going to get worse. What's coming? Hmm. This is nothing what we're experiencing right now. Okay? Watch this. Hmm. Okay? Maybe I'll touch on it. Okay, give me that in uh, First Chronicles 21. Okay? First Chronicles 21. Read verse 14. You know what? Start at verse 1. First Chronicles 21 verse 1. Read that. First Chronicles Chapter 21, verse 1. Read. And Satan stood up against Israel and provoked David to number Israel. Because now this is this scenario is going to create for Israel to be in the midst of sin, and the Lord will use that situation to plague Israel. Now jump down to verse 14. First Chronicles chapter 21, verse 14. Mm -hmm. So the Lord sent pestilence upon Israel. And then the Lord sent pestilence upon Israel. The Lord sent diseases upon Israel. When since the, since this corona started, our people be dropping dead in large numbers. But not as much as the white man hoped for. That damn devil the Bible speaks of. Not as what he hoped for. But he says, the Lord sent pestilence upon Israel. Come on. And there was what? And there fell of Israel 70,000 men. They fell of Israel 70,000 men. But this is just, this is back then. Today is more than that. You understand? Go ahead. And God sent an angel unto Jerusalem to destroy it. Mm. And as he was destroying, the Lord beheld, and he repented him of the evil, and said to the angel that destroyed, it is enough, stay now thine hand. And the angel of the Lord stood by the threshing floor of Onan, the Jebusite. You see what you see what happens? Because the angel put out a sword against Israel to plague us. You understand? With pestilence, because the Lord was mad. You understand? Read on verse 16. Watch this. And David lifted up his eyes and saw the angel of the Lord stand between the earth and the heaven, having mm. a drawn sword in his hand stretched out over Jerusalem. 
Then David and the elders of Israel, who were clothed in sackcloth, fell upon their faces. Now, what you want to notice here is that this was heavy stuff. For you to see this stuff, you have to be on some level with the Lord. It says, and David lifted up his eyes and saw the angel of the Lord stand between the earth and the heaven. Now, that's heavy right there. Having a, uh, it says, having a drawn sword in his hand stretched out over Jerusalem. So right now, that's what's going on. You understand? It just so happens that he's using Esau to push this, these diseases out. You understand? But Esau doesn't move without the Mosai God say so. Understand that thing. But the, the, the point is this. The Lord is doing that to what? To, for our people to trust in him rather than to trust in what? In Esau and Esau's medicines. In Esau's media. His media, his medicine, you understand? His philosophies, his Christianity, his white Jesus. The Lord wants us to return back unto him. That's why he's doing this thing. Okay? That's why the Lord is allowing this to happen. And it's going to get worse. It's going to get worse. Watch this. Give me that in Revelation 14. Okay? No, no. Revelation 15. Revelation 15 verse 1. Watch this. Revelation chapter 15 verse 1. Wait. And I saw another sign in heaven. Great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plates, for in mm. them is filled up the rest of God. Now that's heavy right there. It says the seven angels having the seven last plates. You understand? For in them is filled up the wrath of God. So these seven angels, their job is to bring havoc on this earth. So these angels, they have the seven plates that are going to be released on this earth to bring forth judgment and vengeance on earth before the Lord returns. Give me that in Revelation 8 verse 1. Okay. Revelation chapter 8 verse 1. And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. Hmm. Really and again? I saw the Revelation chapter 8, verse 1. And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. Come on. And I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. Mm, great. That's it. That's it on there. Okay, that's it. Go back. Revelation 15. Okay. Revelation chapter 15 and verse, read verse 6. Revelation chapter 15, verse 6. And the seven angels came out of the temple, having the seven plagues, clothed mm. in pure and white linen, and having their breasts girded with golden girdles. Read that again, verse 6. Revelation chapter 15, verse 6. And the seven angels came out of the temple, having the seven plagues, clothed in pure and white linen, and having their breasts girded with golden girdles. So now he's saying, it says what? It says, having the seven plagues, clothed in pure, clothed in pure and white linen, and having their breasts girded with golden girdles. So these seven angels have seven plagues in their hand. Which is what which is filled with the wrath of the most high God to wring havoc on this earth. Go ahead. And one of the four beasts gave unto the seven angels seven golden vials full of the wrath of God, who live mm. forever and ever. You see that thing? So these seven angels, they have the seven golden vials full of what? Full of the wrath of God who liveth forever and ever. Now, this is heavy right here. So these, these seven angels, they've got the seven plagues and these, these they got the vows which are filled with the seven plagues, which represents the wrath of the most high God that he will bring on this earth. So we haven't seen nothing yet. I mean, there's been so many diseases on this earth, but not like this where 
People have to be locked into their houses and so forth. Listen, there's never been anything like this. Guess what? The, the stuff that is coming, they are definitely going to make your ears to ring. Understand, it will, your, your ears are going to tingle. That's what we read in the scriptures. Okay? Read verse 8. Come on. Revelation chapter 15, verse 8. And the temple was filled with smoke from the glory of God and from mm. his power. And no man was able to enter into the temple till the seven plagues of the seven angels were fulfilled. Meaning what? We're not going to, listen, before we're going to see the kingdom, there's going to be a lot of evil happening on this earth. The day of judgment. Okay? Before the day of judgment, all these evils must happen on this earth as part of the deliverance of our, our people. They left. Until that such time, that's not going to happen. This must happen first. Okay? So you must be thinking what? You must be like as a stranger and as a pilgrim on this earth. Don't be spiritually lost wife. Okay? Don't be like that. Okay. Um, go back to John. Okay? I mean, go back to Luke 19. Luke chapter 19, verse 14 again. Luke chapter 19, verse 14. Read. Really? But his citizens hated him and sent mm. a message after him saying, we will not have this man to reign over us. Come on. And it came okay. to pass. Read. No, no, no. Read verse 14 again. I'm sorry. Read verse 14 once again. Luke chapter 19, verse 14. Mm -hmm. But his citizens hated him and sent a message after him saying, we will not have this man to reign over us. So that's what they are saying. They don't want Christ to reign over us, to, to reign over them. That's why it says, but his citizens hated him. Okay? We will not have this man to reign over us. Watch this. Give me that in John 8, verse 37. John 8, verse 37. Let's read that. John chapter 8, verse 37. Read. I know that ye are Abraham's seed, but ye mm -hmm. seek to kill me, because my word has no place in you. You see what Christ is telling? He's telling the scribes and Pharisees now. He says, I know you are Abraham's seed, but you seek to kill me. What does that mean? First John 3, 15, let's get that. First John chapter 3, verse, you know what? Jump down to verse 40. Okay. John 8, verse 40 first. Let's read that first. John chapter 8, verse 40. Read. Really? But now you seek to kill me, a man that had told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. You see what he's telling them? He says, but now you seek to kill me, a man that had told you the truth. He's talking about himself, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. Meaning you never seen Abraham. But you see me and I have seen the Father. You understand? That's what he's saying right there. Get that in John, 1 John 3, 15. So we understand what it means when it says, but you seek to kill me. But you seek to kill me. Okay. What does he mean? 1 John 3, verse 15. Read that. 1 John chapter 3, verse 15. Uh -huh. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. Come on. And he know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. You see what he's saying? Whosoever hated his brother is a murderer. So that's what he means. Go back to John 8. This is what, that's what he means when he says, but you seek to kill me because you hate my gut. Like we read in Luke 19, 14. John 8, verse 37 again. John chapter 8, verse 37. Mm -hmm. I know that ye are Abraham's seed, but ye seek to kill me because my word has no place in you. Read. I speak that which I have seen with my father, and ye do that which ye have seen with your father. Meaning your father, the devil. Who was their father at this point? Rome was their father. Who was the Romans? The white, the white man, so-called white man. Iso Edom, I do me. Go ahead. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus says unto them, If ye were Abraham's children, he would do the works of Abraham. 
Because Abraham kept the commandments. Get that in Genesis 26 and 5. If you were Abraham's children, you would do what you would do the works of Abraham. What did our forefather Abraham do? Read that. Genesis 26 verse 5. Genesis chapter 26 verse 5. Read. Because that Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. You see what our forefather Abraham did? So if they were truly Abraham, see, they would do the works of Abraham, which is the obedience and the keeping of God's laws. Okay, go back to John 8. Verse 14 now. John chapter 8, verse 40. Mm -hmm. But now you seek to kill me, a man that had told you the truth, which I have heard of God, this did not Abraham. Okay, now watch this. Give me the go back to Luke 19, read verse 27 now. Luke 19, verse 27. Luke chapter 19, verse 27. Read. But those mine enemies, uh -huh. which would which would not come that on, I should reign over them, bring mm -hmm. hither and slay them before me. You see what he's saying? But those mine enemies, who's there? Jump up to verse 14 so we understand. Okay. Luke chapter 19, verse 14. But his citizens hated him mm. and sent a message after him saying, we will not have this man to, this man to reign over us. Jump down to verse 27. Luke chapter 19, verse 27. But those mine enemies, which would not that I should reign over them, bring hither and slay them before me. You see what he's saying? He says, those mine enemies, which would not that I should reign over them, which hated, which hated me, bring them hither and slay, kill them before my eyes. That's what Christ is saying right there. Go back to Psalms 81, read verse 16 now. Psalms 81, verse 16. Psalm chapter 81, verse 16. Read. Fill their faces with shame no, that no. they may. Psalms 81, verse 16. Yes, sir. Psalm chapter 81, verse 16. Fill their faces with shame. Are you in that Psalms 81? They... Apologies, sir. Psalms 80. Psalms 81, verse 16. He should have fed them also with the finest of the wheat, and mm. with honey out of the rock should I have satisfied thee. So now he's saying, because had you listened, had you, had you not been had you not hated me, that's what the Lord is saying, because verse 15 says, the haters of the Lord should have submitted themselves unto him. We did not. Otherwise, we should have endured forever, which we did not. That's why we're in captivity now. He says, he should have fed them also with the finest of the wheat, and with honey out of the, of the rock should I have satisfied thee. So the Lord was going to take care of us where we don't have to toil like this. Because right now we are toiling. Right now we're catching hell. Right now we're complaining all the time, sun, in, sun up, from sun up to sun down. We be complaining. You understand? The Lord says, I was going to, I was going, you will be taken care of if you just do what I tell you. Watch this. Give me the book of Deuteronomy 32, verse 12. Deuteronomy 32, verse 12. Let's read that. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 12. Read. So the Lord alone did lead him, and there was no strange God with him. That's the same thing that we read, because he said, don't have any strange God within you, neither should you serve any strange God. That's why he says, so the Lord alone did lead him, and there was no strange God with him. Okay, that was that. Talk about our, our people, Israel. Read. He made him ride on the high places of the earth that mm -hmm. he might eat the increase of the fields. Right. And he made him to suck honey out of the rock and oil out of the, the flinty rock. So he took care of us. The Lord took care of us. Come on. 
butter of kin and milk butter of, of sheep. Kind. Butter of kind. Kind goes into cattle. Butter of kind. Go ahead, read it again, verse 14. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 14. Mm -hmm. Butter of kind and milk of sheep with fat of lambs and rams of the breed of Bashan and goats mm. with the fat of kidneys of wheat and thou didst drink the pure blood of the grape. Meaning when we were wealthy, we were wealthy. The most High God really took care of us. When did this take place? Give me that in 1 Kings chapter 4 verse 20. 1 Kings 4 verse 20. This is during the time when King Solomon took the throne. Okay? In a peaceable time. Watch this. 1 Kings chapter 4 verse 20. Come on. 1 Kings chapter 4 verse 20. Read. Judah and Israel were many, as the sand which is by the sea in multitude, eating mm. and drinking and making merry. Because we were in the kingdom, okay? And Solomon was the king. Jump up to verse 1 so we understand. 1 Kings chapter 4 verse 1. So King Solomon was king over all Israel. Okay, this is during the time of King Solomon's reign. Jump down to verse 21. 1 Kings chapter 4 verse 21. And Solomon reigned over all kingdoms from the river unto the land of the Philistines and unto mm. the border of Egypt. They Great. brought presents and served Solomon all the days of his life. So these nations, they brought presents and served King Solomon all the days of his life. Read on, verse 22. Watch this. And Solomon's provision for one day was 30 measures of fine flour and mm. three score measures of meal. Yo, mm, come on. 10 fed oxen and 20 oxen out of the pastures and 100 mm. sheep beside huts and rupaks and fowl deer and fetid fowl. fowl. Deer. A fallow deer, fallow deer and fetid fowl. So you see how, how well we were, we, we were living? We was living, I mean, we were living large. Solomon's provision for one day, that means every day was getting the stuff. For one day, 30 measures of fine flour, three score measures of meal, 10 fat oxen, 20 oxen out of the pastures, and 100 sheep, besides hearts, roebucks, and fallow deer and fetid fowl, on a daily basis. That's why he says, the Lord, he says, he made him ride on the high places of the earth that he might eat of the increase of the field and made him to suck honey out of the rock and oil out of the flinty rock. Mm. Go ahead. Come on. For he had dominion over all the region on this side the river from Tifsa even to Azar over all the kings on this side the river and he had peace on all sides round about him. Really? And Judah and Israel dwelt safely, every man under his vine and under his fig tree, from Dan even to Beersheba, all the days of Solomon. Come on. And Solomon had 40,000 stalls of horses for his chariots and mm. 12,000 horsemen. Come on, read. And those officers provided victual for King Solomon and for all that came unto King Solomon's table, Every man in his mouth, they lacked nothing. You see that thing? Every man in his mouth, they lacked nothing. So nobody had lack. The Lord took care of us. But today, many of us, we have lack. Why? Because of what? Because of the breaking of God's laws. You understand? So now, this is when the Lord took care of us. The opposite of that, watch this. Give me Deuteronomy 32 verse 15. Watch this. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 15. Come on. But Jeshurun waxed fat and kicked. Thou art waxen fat, thou art grown thick, thou art covered with fatness. Then he forsook God which made him and lightly esteemed the rock of his salvation. So now, when the Lord was taking care of us, guess what we did? We forgot about the Mosai. We started to hate the Mosai God. And when we got fat, meaning what? We were wealthy, 
We were living large. Guess what we did? Next verse, verse 16. Who said that? Watch this. Come on. They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods. Mm -hmm. With abominations provoked they him to anger. You see that thing? This is the same thing that is happening to our people today. You see our people that had a little banality sent in your hand. so easy. Bo You understand? Banality sent that they've got some sense in your the stuff that they begin to do, they start to do garbage. They start to do evil stuff. They want to be gay. You understand? There's evil stuff that they do in the media to get media attention. There are media halls and so forth. Because why? Because now they have money. They don't know what to do with it. Why? Because they are just children with money. You understand? They have no sense. Okay, come on. Ray. They sacrificed unto devils not to God, really? to gods whom they knew not, to new gods that, knew, that came newly up, whom your mm -hmm. fathers feared not. Read. Right. Jump down. Jump down to verse 19. Come on. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 19. Mm -hmm. And when the Lord saw it, he abhorred them. You see that? Of when the, hold on. When the Lord saw, what did we do? We provoked him to jealousy with strange gods, you understand? We sacrifice unto devils, not to him no more. You understand? To new gods that came newly up. When you read about first in First Kings chapter 11 down, you see the gods of the gods of the other nations that King Solomon was worshipping because we went the hell off. Why? Because we was wealthy. We was rich. That's why we were doing all those evils. Okay, come on. Just like our people are doing today. Ray. Because of the provoking of his sons and of his daughters, mm -hmm. Right. And he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end shall be. Come For on. they are a very forward generation, children in whom is no faith. Because our people have no faith today. That's why our people now, you notice our people today, even in the Bundus now, you hear our mothers, our brothers, our sisters and cousins and so forth. They'll be talking to us and say, so have you taken the vaccine? If you take it, listen, me, I'm not doing that until I'm forced to. Why? Because we put our trust in the Lord. We put our trust in the most High God. That's the program. Okay? We have to put our trust in the Lord. The most High God gave us medicines and so forth so we can take care of ourselves. The herbs, you understand, fruits and veggies. He gave us our diet, how to make sure that we, our immune system is strong. You understand? So on and so forth. So now we no longer trust in the word that God gave us on how to know which medication, which herbs, which vegetables to eat in order for us to stay healthy. Now we don't longer trust in the Lord. We don't send the prayers up when we get sick. We run to Esau. No, we must put our trust in the most High God and the Lord will deliver us. Read again. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 20. Come on. And he said, I will hide my face from them I will see what their end shall be. Come on. For they are a very forward generation, children in whom is no faith. Okay, watch this. Keep reading. They have moved me to jealousy with that which is not God. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities, and mm. I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. I will provoke them to anger with the foolish nations. You see what the Lord is saying? He says, he's going to do this thing. But this goes into Northern Kingdom, okay? When he says, I will provoke them to jealousy, which what? I will prov provoke them to jealousy with those which are not a people. You can read about that in Hosea 1. I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. That also happened when, during the time of Christ, when he met the Samaritan woman, okay? When he met Cornelius, when, when Peter met Cornelius, that's when Northern Kingdom was being woken up and so forth. Okay, come on. Verse 22. For a fire is kindled in my anger and Read. shall burn unto the lowest hell. Meaning what? Captivity. Continue. Come on. Remember, it says unto the lowest hell because we are in our low estate, in captivity. The Lord says, listen, you're going to feel it. Okay, we're going to feel his wrath. Read. And shall consume the earth with her increase and set on fire the foundations of the mountains. You see that thing? The Lord is saying he's going to destroy us. 
Not only that, he will use this nation to destroy us while he's destroying them at the same time. Go ahead. I will heap mischiefs upon them. Mm. I will spend my arrows upon them. That's judgment, come on. They shall be bent with hunger and devoured with burning heat. And you with see what the Lord is saying? It says they shall be bent with hunger. Because when the COVID corona hit, there was a lot of a lot of our people, they lost jobs. Okay. You understand? There was no food. You couldn't buy anything. If you had to go to the shops, you stand there for hours. Okay. Because things were also running out, out of in the shops. It was there. He says they shall be bent with hunger and devoured with burning heat. This goes into what diseases? Okay. This goes into what? This goes, yeah, that's diseases. That goes, let's just keep it simple. This goes into diseases. Go ahead. And with bitter destruction, I, will also, you know, I will also send the teeth of beasts upon them. Mm. With the poison of serpents of the dust. So the Lord is saying, he says, I will also send teeth of beasts upon them. This goes into what this goes into gain of function research, where they're mixing animal DNA and so forth with human DNA to accelerate the severity of these viruses that they are creating in these labs. You understand? Read the sword without and terror within shall destroy both the young men and the virgin, the suckling mm. also with the men of gray hairs. You see what the Bible is saying, meaning the children, the suckling child and the older men. Remember, it says, at the beginning, it says, is, uh, is uh, only affecting people 60 and up. Then that changed. Everybody in the beginning started getting affected. All of a sudden, they say children also, they are being, they are also, they are catching it. That's what we're reading here. Okay? This is Bible prophecy right here. But don't be scared, brothers and sisters. Don't be scared of any of this stuff. Give me that in uh, Second Exodus, chapter 8, verse 27. Okay, don't be scared, brothers and sisters. This is not going to touch us. The Lord is with us. Okay. Even if it does, guess what's going to happen? You understand? God forbid the Lord called you home. You're going you're gonna to be resurrected first. Understand that thing. First as, second Ezra 8, verse 27. Read that. Second Ezra chapter 8, verse 27. Mm -hmm. Regard not the wicked inventions of the heathen, Read. But the desire of those that keep thy testimonies in afflictions. You see what the Lord is saying? He says, you better focus. He says, don't regard the wicked inventions of the heathens. They are always creating wicked inventions. These viruses and so forth to kill us. The redlining, they put us in the ghettos. They live on the best places on the earth and so on. Listen, those are their wicked inventions, okay? He says, but the desire of those that keep thy testimonies in affliction. Well, that's us. Our job is to stay focused. That's why it says we have no faith. We must pray for that thing. You understand? Pray for the Lord to increase our faith. All right? Watch this. Mm. Go back. Go back to um, go back to Psalms 81, verse 16. Okay? Psalms 81, verse 16. Psalms chapter 81, verse 16. Read. He should have fed them also with the finest of the wheat, and with honey out of the rock should I have satisfied thee. Because that's what we read. When that happened, that's when King Solomon was the king. You understand? That's when we really, we are in our glory. Okay? But when we went off, you say what we read. And guess what? When we went off, it happened back then. It's happening today. The judgment that happened back then is also happening today. That's what we read in Revelation 15, Revelation 8, so on and so forth. Second Ezra 16, why? These things are going to happen. Our job is to prepare ourselves mentally and spiritually. You understand? That's why the Most High God, give me that in Sarah 38, okay? The Most High God gave us medications, which we must use, okay? Sarah 38, verse 1. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 38, verse 1. Wait. Honor a physician with the honor due unto him for the uses mm -hmm. which ye may have of him, for the Lord hath created him. So the Lord created the physician, okay? The Lord had created the physician. Jump down to verse four. He created the physician, you understand? 
and we must honor that physician. That's going into our people as a, as our people that know medicines and so forth. We talk about herbs and so forth. Our mothers, they still do that. My mother, she knows that stuff. Okay. So am I going to listen to Iso? Hell no. I'm going to listen to her because she's Iso and she's, they still understand. I mean, they are old, but they still understand herbs and so forth. So you go home, go to the Bundus. Your mother will say, listen, you have a flu. You have a dis. You have to take this. Take this a root right here. Take that leaf. Eat that. Boil it. Drink that. You'll be fine. Keep going. Ecclesiasticus chapter 38 verse 4. Read. The Lord has created medicines out of the earth, and he mm. that is wise will not abhor them. Come on. No, 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 no. Read verse 2. I'm sorry. Jump up to verse 2. Ecclesiasticus chapter 38 verse 2. For of the most high cometh healing, and he shall receive honor of the king. You see what he's saying? Of the most high cometh healing, because the Lord is the one that really brings forth the healing. It's not the herbs. Is not the mollifying plaster like we read about in Wisdom of Solomon 16, verse 12. It's none of that. It's the spirit of the Lord that brings forth healing to us. But our job is to do what the Bible says to show our faith, right? The skill of the physician shall lift up his head, and in mm. the sight of great men, he shall be in admiration. Okay, come on. Let's talk about our people, right? The Lord has created medicines out of the earth. And he that is wise will not abhor them. You see what he's saying? And he that is wise will not abhor them. You understand? Because our forefathers, I mean, they were knowledgeable in these things. Give me that in Colossians, okay? Give me Colossians. Our forefathers, they were knowledgeable in these things. Just today, you know, our minds is spiritually dead. Okay? But we're coming back. The Most High God is resurrecting us. Okay? The Bible is the defibrillator. The Lord is bringing us back to life. Understand that thing. Give me that in Colossians 4. Read verse 14. Colossians chapter 4 verse 14. Read. Look, the beloved physician and Demas. The, the beloved physician. So look, the beloved physician. That's why it says honor a physician. Because our forefather Luke was a physician. Go ahead. And Demas greet you. So they understood those things. They understood herbs and so forth. You understand? So we understood the herbs and veggies back then. So today, as we are coming back to who we are, the Lord will bring those things to our remembrance as well. And we're going to be able to teach them to our children that come after us. You understand? So I'm going to end the class right there. Okay? I'm going to end the class right there in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's break bread. Okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, break it and said, Take it. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.